Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome to another live stream. Hope you guys are all having an awesome day. Hope you guys had a fantastic new comic book day yesterday. You were able to get all of your books. Everybody in chat right now, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got Dr. Cosmos, what's up? Spitzkopf, Larry, John, Dayton, KO, Connor, N1N2, what's good, everybody? Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Let's see, we got some really good books this week. I think I only got, what am I looking at? Two Force... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, like 13, 12 or 13 books, something around there. Had to read a couple digitally. My shop got shorted on a few, uh, but overall, it's a really good week. I, I'm pretty positive this is my first ever Archie comic. My shop, I was really surprised to see it, but they did have the cult of that Wilkin boy. So I, I, like I said, first ever Archie comic, and it was pretty solid. It's a one shot. I mean, look at some of these books we're going to be talking about today, guys. We got Black Tay from AWA, All Eight Eyes from Dark Horse, a brand new horror series from them, The Harrowers Back from Boom Studios, Another House of Slaughter, Terror Wars, a brand new series from Image. I don't know if this book was supposed to release this week. Did you guys see Dead Seas at your shop? Because it's showing that it's coming out next week. Uh, but my shop had it, so I picked it up, obviously. We, were, we didn't talk about it on Tuesday. Last Barbarian, folks. New Warlock series is out. And Dr. Atomic and the Pipe, the Pipe and the Dope Book. Uh, I can't wait to talk about these books. Like I said, thank you all so much for tuning in. Mark McGrath in the house. Nothing K-Bar. John after forever. CKS Pajma Lee. Dino Might. What's good, everybody? All right. As always, we're going to be reviewing these books. We're going to be talking about these books. I want to hear your opinions as well. This is, this is a big group discussion. I'm going to be obviously talking about these books and what I thought about them. But I want to hear what you thought about them, too. And if there's anything that I didn't pick up that you guys obviously recommend, let me know. Uh, the two digital ones that I had to read was Superman from DC, obviously, and then No One Issue Number 2. That one my shop got really shorted on for whatever reason. So they ordered it for me, and I still am not up to date on The Punisher. I know Issue Number 11 came out. I heard it was awesome. I sadly didn't read that one. I'm still waiting on Number 10 to come in, but my shop ordered me both copies of that. So I will eventually be checking that out, too. Uh, after forever, I totally feel you on that. I get anything from Colin Bunn. I totally agree. Colin Bunn is a phenomenal horror writer. Wilkins Cole had a great cover. That one too. Uh, Connor, I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Do, yo. All right. So two things. Damn you, Mark, you hate that Punisher book. Ah, that sucks, man. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's that my shop got really shorted. I know that they, They've been going super light on new comic book day, so they didn't really... I don't, I'm not sure if they ordered that many copies to begin with. I know they ordered a lot of one and then really drastically cut back on two, and I feel like number three, they didn't really have that many copies. Uh, Andre, keep it funky, my friend. One more Punisher. Oh, I, oh, I think that... Yeah, I think there's only one or two more issues. I know they, uh, they're cutting it short. I feel like that series was too good to, to not keep going with it. Uh, Mark, it sucks that you hate it, though. I, I'm personally really enjoying it. Uh, but while we're letting some people come in, dude, I got to tell you. So you said, uh, somebody said something before. Uh, what did I make of the Always a Ranger? I didn't get a chance to watch it. So yesterday was kind of a long day, man. It was new comic book day. I did the stream with the EXP guys. And I was up till, I was up till damn near 4 a.m. trying to clean and refurbish this PS3 Slim. I, it was a shot in the dark. I knew it was either going to be a system like failure or it just needed to be cleaned out. I cleaned this whole goddamn thing. Uh, it's spotless. It looks gorgeous. I plugged it in at the very end of it. I'm, t I'm telling you, like, I think it was like 338 or 348 or something. And I still got those same three uh, red beeps and, I, and it shut down. I said, son of a bitch. Uh, so I wasted like five hours cleaning that fucking thing. Uh, no, not the nasty bug filled one. That one's thrown away. This one, it, it didn't look that bad. It was actually pretty gross. Not like bugs or anything, just super dirty. And I thought I had a chance to, to save it, but it's uh, some sort of system failure. But it's not, it's not a power supply and it's not the power button itself. So I'm not sure. I think it's an actual malfunction with the motherboard. But that's, that's another day and another conversation. But in addition to that, I didn't get a chance to watch it because it was a gorgeous day out yesterday. I, you know, I had to I had to mow the lawn. The time came. We got a lot of rain. It's it, it looked like shit. I had to clean it. So I'm so I'm sitting there, right? I just want to tell this quick story before I get into these books. I know you guys are really excited to hear these too. All right, so 
I'm sitting there. I got this. I got this John Deere riding lawnmower from fucking the mid '90s. I am telling you, I I grew so I grew up. My grandparents had this riding mower. I grew up as a little kid riding on it with my grandpa. It's on its absolute last leg. It's it's chugging along though. So I'm mowing the lawn with it, right? And I I'm in the zone. I'm trying to get these lines all. You know, I'm trying to get them really nice. And lo and behold, I I'm running. I'm running to the end of my lawn, and I'm getting to the end by the road. And I look up. And there's this fucking possum like 10 feet away from me. And it's broad daylight. And I'm like, I know these things are nocturnal, right? And this thing looks like something out of The Walking Dead. This thing is fucking staggering back and forth. It's like shaking its head going like this every couple of seconds. And I and I like immediately make this hard left turn. And by a hard left turn, it's a really wide radius because the, the tires are borderline deflated. I forgot to fill them up uh, with air beforehand. And like I said, it's on the last leg. So it's moving at like fucking three miles per hour. But here I am trying to zoot away from this, this fucking rabid looking possum thing. And I'm thinking I could just get off this tractor and walk away faster than sitting on this damn thing. But, uh, I, I was keeping an eye on it. I'm telling you, it was like 10 feet away from me and it was, uh, it, it looked sick as all hell. Uh, yeah, that one was really ugly too. Uh, but the thing is I looked it up and it said that, uh, possums don't usually get rabies. They, but at the same time, they're also nocturnal. So the fact that it was out in broad daylight, I, I don't really know. Moral of the story was shit was crazy. And I was up all night with that stupid ass PS3. So no, I did not get to the Power Rangers, uh, special, but, uh, maybe tonight, Passionately drink every time Alec drops an F-bomb. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to drop so many of them. It happens. Uh, I did not kiss it. One one bit your dog's nose. Down, that's what I'm saying. I, ha I have dogs, and uh, the garage door is open. I just, you know, I wanted to make sure everything was good, so I was trying to rush for that. But, all right. I don't want to keep wasting your time. Let's get to these books. It was an awesome week. For those of you just tuning in, I told you I got, was it two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve? Looks like 13 books this week. Two of them are digital, Superman number three and No One number two. A free comic book day is coming up. I'm really excited for that one. There's a rabid squirrel by me, I think. Ugh, that's the worst. John, I know you love that Punisher series, man. I'm so bummed that I'm a couple issues behind, but... I'm going to get caught up, and I'm, I'm, I really like that series, too. I think it's fantastic. But with that being said, because we're talking about The Punisher, you talk about Power Rangers forever and always or whatever. Uh, yeah, some people were uh, – someone asked – I forget who it was that just commented. They asked if I saw it or what I thought of it. I didn't get a chance to see it yet. <laughs> no. Uh, no, my, yeah, my name's Alec. Oh, and of course, the top – the 10 variants from ASN. Yeah, there's a ton of those, Spitzkopf. I was waiting for you. Uh, so we're going to talk about, I only got two Marvel books this week because like I said, wasn't able to get the Punisher and everything else from Marvel. I just, it was a pretty rough, it was a pretty bad week for Marvel, in my opinion. Hey, Clifton Hobbs getting the watch alive, man. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Just watch it on Netflix. Wasn't even aware it was coming out. It's a good throwback corny. So I, I believe it's probably real corny, but it's cool that they got some of the original cast in there. I don't think it's everybody. I think it's the original Blue Ranger. I don't know if it, I Blue Ranger and Pink Ranger, I think, are the originals that are in it. I'm not sure if uh, the Red Ranger and the Black Ranger are the original characters. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Hey, Sean, what's good, man? Henny, what's up? What's up? X-23 is in the uh, in the X-Force now. I think they were kind of hitting at that in the other series. All right, the first one I'm going to go over, we're going to get this one out of the way. We got Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, issue number five. This is cover A. For those of you who are interested in this one, this was the series finale. I was not expecting this to be the series finale. I honestly thought this was going to be an ongoing series. I I don't know. I Am I wrong? I feel like when we were doing the original videos and we looked it up online, it said that it was a brand new series from... Uh, Marvel and it didn't have a number next to it previews didn't have a number next to it so I thought it was supposed to be limited but once you finished or I thought it was going to be ongoing not limited but when you finish up the actual book it says the end at the very end and it does wrap up quite nicely I'm I'm really surprised at how much I did like this Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur book 
I, I I'm gonna tell you straight up, it's definitely not. It's meant for kids. It's it's a kids book, but I think as far as the kids book goes, the artwork is very nice. I'm gonna show you a couple pages real quick of that. I think the artwork is very nice. I think they did a great job developing the story, and I also think they did a really good job with the characters. We got a uh, first appearance of her name is Olivia, the Sad Sacks. That's kind of like the ice. They're not the ice skating, but the skating group that Lunella is part of. And it's just, it's overall, it's a fun read. It's nothing special. It's nothing that's really going to just, you know, it's groundbreaking to Marvel. But if you got kids, let them read it, let them enjoy it. Um, and as far as kids books goes, it's, it's really not that bad at all. Moon Girl, officially the seventh smartest person in the MCU. I wouldn't be surprised. They were hinting at in this one that she's one of the smartest ones, if not the smartest. But just to, I, I don't want to spoil the whole thing. I, I can only imagine there's uh, there's 33 people watching. I feel like most people didn't really read this series. So I'm not going to spoil too much. I'm not going to be getting too in-depth with it. But this one, it does wrap everything up pretty nicely. Uh, if you can recall, the main plot of the story is you've got Lunella and her group of uh, skaters. They're called the Sad Sacks. It's another group of, I don't think they're all in humans. They might be some in humans, a couple mutants. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. But then there's this other girl, her name is Olivia, and she isn't really part of the group, but she we find out that she's also Cree, and she's trying to t kind of take over the Earth, she's trying to get everybody under her mind control, and that's why I said it's really not that bad of a story, they really progress the plot well, um, and you will be slightly lost, uh, they make a reference to one of those Moon Girl, uh, I'd, you call it a one shot, but... Uh, like the Moon Girl and Moon Knight and Moon Knight or Moon Girl and the Avengers, like those kind of one issues, those one off issues that they came out with uh, maybe four or five months ago, maybe around November. I don't even remember at this point, uh, but something happens in one of those that causes Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur to kind of swap brains every once in a while. Uh, so they make reference to that, and that does happen. So if you didn't read that issue, I think it's the first one, the Moon Girl or <laughs> Moon Girl and the Avengers. But yeah, it's it's really not that bad. If you can get them all for a reasonable price, I recommend it. Uh, let's see. Who drew it? Let me double check. I, good call. I always like to mention who the writer and the artist is. Uh, so the writer is Jordan Ifueco and the color artist KJ Diaz, inker Jose Marzan Jr., and penciler is Alba Glez. Cover artist Ken Lashley. I think, yes. So, Glez did the artwork as well. So, not bad artwork. Let me show you guys another page real quick. There we go. Yeah. So, nice. I, I, think it's, I think it's a solid series. Nice artwork. Nice story. It's, it's meant for kids. But it is what it is. Marvel should do more books for kids. It, it's funny. It's funny you say that because I feel like for a hobby like this, they bank on... Like, the books are obviously written for adults, when in reality, comics are kind of intended for kids, but the comics that are out today obviously aren't intended for kids. But the thing is, is with Marvel, they're kind of caught in between this. They're not really doing adult books, but they're making them really cheesy and kind of kiddish to where adults aren't really... Um, you know, they're not really connecting with a lot of the series because they're having a lot of stuff in there that they make these corny jokes, they're making it really cheesy, they make it lighthearted... And I, I think that they're stuck in this weird spot. And I think that's why indies are so good because a lot of them are pushing the limits on what they can put in a comic book, which one I'm going to get to in a little bit later, like this one from image. It's, it's a whole book about weed and how to grow weed and, you know, make pipes and shit like that. So that's, you know, something like that. But then when you have Marvel again, they're not really doing adult things. They're kind of, like I said, they're stuck in this in between. They're trying to capture every audience that they possibly can. Uh, let's see. They try to, yeah, they try to please everybody. Yeah, they're hitting the middle ground in the exact wrong way. <laughs> they really are. Uh, because kids don't particularly care about comics. The The way that the, the kids are going to get involved with comics is from the parents and the older, maybe an older brother, older sister, just some sort of adult that has them where the kids start looking at them. So you obviously need to get the adult side of everything, but then something like this, like Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, why can't they come out with books like that? You've got 37 different Spider-Man series out there. Make a kid one. I I say did do the, uh, was it Big Trouble or tr something, something Trouble, and it's got Miles and uh, Peter Parker in it. So they, they do them every once in a while, but overall they just, I don't know, they're stuck in the middle, I think. 
Let's see, Mark. Yeah, too childish for adults, too adult for children. Yeah, it like yeah, like I keep saying, they're stuck in this odd middle ground. Kids barely read comics. Kids, honestly, I could probably say kids barely read at this point. Everything's a tablet. Everything's online. Uh, the the concept of them probably reading a book is foreign. I'm a child in an adult body, so we're seeing <laughs> that too, and it's very expensive. Almost everything about collecting comics as a hobby is backwards. Yeah, it's you're right. It's uh the hobby the hobby isn't what it was. People would get the books because they're invested in the stories. They want to know what's going on. And at this point, that's really not the case for a lot of comics. A lot of at least I can speak for Marvel. Uh, well, I can't speak for everybody, but just speaking f for Marvel, maybe probably a little bit of DC. People get them for first appearances. People get them for covers, the exclusive covers, and big things that do happen but for the most part nobody really a lot of people don't care about the stories anymore like events oh my god yo this this coming uh is it this week no next week i i i can't wait to talk about those marvel books with you guys next week it's all symbiote stuff all the carnage and then all star wars basically it's it's a crazy week uh let's see i've seen one kid at the shop i when i go to my comic shop i almost never see kids i Almost never see kids thinking about it. Do I read more digitally or physical physical copies? I'm more digital because, again, I don't have a comic shop in the area. I prefer physical. I like to physically have the book in my hands. I like to I like to appreciate all of it. How's the paper quality? How's the art? Because, you know, digital can always look a little bit different. How's everything else in the book? I, I just like to have it for my collection. Um. But then again, like this week, I had to read Superman 3. I had to read No One digitally. I am going to get physical copy a physical copy of No One. But my DC, I usually read digitally. Stuff that I'm interested in reading that I don't particularly want to care and store, I, I usually just read digital. Let's see. Crazy events like Symbiotes 1. Uh, dude, it, it, it's going to it's gonna be wild. I'm telling you. it's When I was going through that list earlier, I'm doing my notes for the next video. It's, it was wild. Marvel's putting out so much watchable media that there's no incentive for kids to pick up the book. That's true. And what else and what else uh with it is is that a lot of the a lot of the books like this are dealing with what's going on in either the television shows or the movies. Like the next one I'm going to be talking about. Well, we can start with even Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur. When did we first start seeing Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur? A few months before the TV show was coming out. They do that shit on purpose. And then moving on, I obviously had to get this cover, but we got Warlock Rebirth, a brand new Warlock series. It's a five issue mini series, but why are we getting a Warlock book? Because he's going to be in the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which is coming out in, I don't know, probably the next couple of months. Janice Vell's in this one, and to be honest, I wouldn't even be surprised if he makes an appearance either. We got Gamora in this one, we got Pip. I think we also had somebody else. Maybe it was. All right. So we got Gamora and Pip in this one and then Adam Warlock. And the whole purpose of this one is Janice Vell is coming back down to Earth and he's looking for uh, Captain Marvel. But essentially in this one, he's looking for Adam Warlock for info about Captain Marvel. And that's kind of what this entire issue was. Well, I just got done talking about how, while I thought Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur was a little bit more, well, not by a little bit, it's definitely directed more towards kids. This one, I don't know. It was in that weird middle ground of what are they trying to do with this story? Like, it's not for kids, as I was just saying. It's not really for adults either. And I, I know this might be not a positive thing for a lot of people because there's a lot that we're looking forward to this issue. I really didn't think it was that good. I thought it was very boring. Maybe it's me. I don't particularly care about Janice Vell. I, I don't know. Pip, he shows up. It is what it is. Same with Gamora. Is what it is. Uh, Adam Warlock, pretty excited for that one. We'll see what happens with the series. But I don't know if it was really good enough to continue on with the second issue. It did leave us on kind of an interesting cliffhanger. And I'm not going to get into the spoilers, but I am going to show you just what the artwork looks like. I thought the artwork was fine. I don't think it was anything too special. It's kind of on par with what's usually going on with Marvel nowadays. To be honest, I think the Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur artwork was actually nicer. So that's what that is. Like I said, it's not bad. I'll show you another page, probably with Pip and all of them on it. Yeah, here we go. So there is, I'm not going to get into the spoiler too much, but we do get a first appearance in this issue. It's Eve Warlock. It's kind of the next 
um, the next stage of human evolution. She's kind of coming about saying that Adam Warlock is now I, not obsolete, but he didn't fulfill his mission. And now it's her turn to do basically what he was supposed to do. So a lot of stuff happens with that. And that's what I think was the most interesting part of the issue. I didn't think the story was that good. I didn't think the the dialogue between the characters were that good. Uh, but I like how it ended. And then for that, it kind of made me interested to continue on with the series. But at the same time, I don't know if it was good enough to keep going with. Let's see. Mark says, Warlock Rebirth felt like I was back in the 90s. Janice Vell is a favorite character of mine. The Rons are a great team. Well, that's why I said, I don't know if I, I feel like this is going to be a like a bad take for a lot of people that I, I just didn't. I don't know. I just didn't think it was that great of a story, but I talk about it all the time when it does come to superhero stuff for me. I really need something that feels different. I need something that seems unique. I need something not crazy to happen, but something with a story that makes it stand out from so much other superhero stuff that I read. And at this point, it just doesn't it doesn't feel different. And it feels like every other superhero story that I pick up. It might be. Uh, K-Bar, I was reading your comment. I read the first part of No One it Intrigues Me. The first part, you mean issue one? Or the kind of like the first half of issue two? Dynamite, I dug it. A lot to build on. I want to see how they develop Eve. She could be a great villain if they go that route. See, that's what... Uh, they aren't going to change your world, but both are solid journeyman characters. I, I can agree with that. And see, that's where I was going... That's where, that's where I was kind of going with this one. I didn't think the intro was that great. I didn't think the conversations between the characters were that great. But when they got into the actual plot of the story and then when Eve was introduced, what happened with that, I thought that was all really cool. Uh, so that's why uh, I think it was a good, like a a kind of nice introduction to where the series is going to be going. But the lead up to it was just, I don't know, a little lacking. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I might end up picking up that second issue. I'm glad you guys all really enjoyed it, though. Indie Key Comics says, I thought Warlock Rebirth was awesome. Can't wait for issue two. Uh, Spitzkopf says, have I read that Texas Blood? I read the first maybe four issues, and I thought it was extraordinarily slow. So I didn't keep going with it. But at the time, I don't think it was supposed to be an ongoing series either. I think it was only supposed to be a limiter or a maxi series. So once I found that out, I kind of wish I would have continued on with it because that's the type of story that seemed intriguing to me, but I just didn't, um, I just didn't keep going with it. Were you reading Silver Surfer? No, I wasn't. Mark, I was. And if I was, I don't remember it because back when ever that came out, I was probably, probably like five or six. And I, I don't remember when I actually started getting into comics, but it was probably when I was around 10 ish. So man, actually maybe, I don't know. Although, although what I do know is, is the first ever, all right, so this is, this is kind of a little fun fact here. The first ever comic book that I had, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it's called off the top of my head, but it was an Adam Warlock issue. It had number one on it and it was a sh very shiny cover and I absolutely loved it. I don't even know if I ever read it, uh, back in the day. I was obsessed with it though. I always looked at it and I was always like, whoa, it's a number one, and it's so shiny. I loved it. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, a little fun fact. Let's see. I miss no one one, but issue issue two did not impress me. So I think I'm going to be getting to no one uh, shortly, but I think what it is about that series is that they're doing a really good job building onto the story. Like I said, we'll, we'll I'll talk about it when I get there. Let's see. Hey, Dr. Neznab, what's up, buddy? Above Snakes is the book for you. Oh, I heard that's a really good one. I didn't read it, but I heard it was a good one. Ambassador 1 and 2, really good for a new superhero book. Uh, Ambassador 1 was phenomenal. I think I put that at number one on my top 10 list or whenever I was reviewing books. However I did it that week, I'm pretty sure I put that one at number one. I didn't have an opportunity to read number two yet. My shop has it ordered for me. Uh, ah, David Rodriguez, I didn't listen to the podcast yet, but I heard the podcast really expand on the story and make it better. Let's see. We're going to go with, I think I have Image, the most books from Image this week. So I'm going to save them for last. That's usually Image is the most books. Let's see. And we'll do, and then one from Dark Horse, one from IDW. We'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about 
Dead Seas next. Yeah, we'll talk about Dead Seas next. So this one didn't pop up on my list when I was going over the upcoming new releases for this week's new comic book day. It's showing that it's coming out next week. And I looked up something else that also said it was coming out next week. So I don't know if Dead Sea... This is issue number five, by the way. So I don't know if this was actually supposed to be coming out this week or what happened with it, but... I thought it was another really good issue, and there is one more left, so this is the big penultimate issue, and I think they've done a pretty good job with the story so far. The only thing that I'm having a hard time with is that there is just five issues. There were so many characters that got introduced. I don't know if I said it. This is from IDW, by the way. The artist is... Uh, let me let me get the uh, story is written by Kevin Scott or Gavin Scott and the art is Nick Brokenshire. Here's a little bit of the artwork. Uh, I gotta make sure we got good pages for you. Here we go. Here's some of the artwork. I think the art is very nice. I love the concept of the story. I'm a big fan of horror stuff. I'm a big fan of just ghost stories, monsters, shit like that. You name it. I'm pretty much I'm probably going to pick it up. But the whole concept of this story is that, for whatever reason, the ghosts are stuck on Earth. They're not staying dead. They can't go to whatever the next the next stage of death is for them. They're stuck here on Earth in ghost form. And what happens in this one is that our main character he's going to prison and he takes a he takes I guess a shorter sentence to go work out on one of these ghost ships these ghost ships where a bunch of ghosts are stored and what these inmates have to do is they need to clean the walls off of all the they need to remove all the ectoplasm off the walls because it sells for a ton of money it's got health benefits it's got all these uh, positive things going for it so inmates go out to sea or they go out to wherever and they clean up and gather all this ectoplasm that's the concept of the story as it progressed obviously the ghosts you know they break out all hell breaks loose shit like that uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. My like I was saying, the only problem I had with it so far is that there is a ton of different characters in it, and as the course of the series, uh, like over the course of the series, I kind of lost track of who was who. Even they stopped kind of using names, and it kind of relied on us remembering who they were. And then at one point, a lot of the inmates, they some of the inmates, they started wearing these uh, security guards uniform too, because you know they they're trying to escape. So then I was really mixing up some of the characters. But overall, they've done a really good job expanding the story, and this. While I just got done saying I did have some issues with some of the characters, me personally just not remembering them, uh, they really expanded in this one. And the ghosts, they are, it's, it's all hell is broken loose now. And we learned a lot more about the ghosts in this one. And there's still a lot of stuff that's still up in the air. So there is a mystery going on in this series. I'm really excited to see how it wraps up. I hope you guys are reading this one too, because I, I don't read a lot of stuff from IDW. Uh, but this one, I kind of picked it up last second. I saw it. I thought, ah, Dead Seas, new horror series. Why not give it a try? And it's surprisingly extremely good. It's every single issue I've picked up, I've really enjoyed. Let's see. Superman. We are finally getting some good stuff from the boy in blue. So, yeah, the Superman series is good, too. Uh, Dr. Cosmos. I didn't pick up The Expanse. Uh, the new one, but I know I was talking to a lot of people that were because they really love the TV show. Is there a release date for the first issue of the new Ninja Turtles? Uh, I know not this coming week, but I know the week after that, there's, I think, three different TMNT issues releasing. I think it's the TMNT Ongoing, Last Ronin, and uh, the Armageddon game. So I think all three of those are releasing, not this coming new comic book day, but the one after that. So I hope that helps. Uh, let's see. Next up, we're going to do... There's a lot of horror this week, too. Yo, if you guys are horror fans, I mean, look at this. Think about this list. Terror War, Cold of the Wilkin Boy, House of Slaughter. That's kind of a horror book. Harrower, All Eight Eyes, Black Tape, and Dead Seas. Almost the entire list was horror books this week. So if you're a horror fan, this is a great week for us. Uh, there's an Armageddon Game Alliance issue this week. There's a... yeah. I was going to say, there's a, there's a lot of the Armageddon game stuff. I did, yo, know, Dr. Uh, Nezneb, I did finish re I did finish reading Astronaut Down. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good ending. I thought it was worth the wait. I was excited that we finally did get it all wrapped up, and I think they did a good job with it. Uh, but next up, let's talk about the new one from Dark Horse. Uh, another publisher I don't get a ton of comics from. 
But yeah, you know me, brand new horror series. I'm obviously going to give it a shot. I saw a few people in the the uh, chat, I think on Tuesday, saying, "Why is?" It? I think it was Ko. I think he said he said, "Why does all the new horror stuff have to be about bugs?" And it didn't really click at first, but when you really look at it, this one's about bugs. Uh, what was it? There's there's a lot of uh, the Terror War one is also about bugs. And that's just this week, but I know Breath of Shadows has to deal with bugs, and there's a lot of horror series that are all about bugs right now. It's kind of odd. Uh, but All Eight Eyes, this was kind of an interesting story. I I don't know if it was good enough to continue on with. It, I like the artwork. It kind of reminds me of, well, who's the artist? The script is done by Steve Fox, and the art is Pieter Kowalski. Colors are Brad Simpson, letters Hassan, Atsmani, Elanu. Uh, I definitely butchered that name. Uh, but the artwork slightly reminds me of uh, kind of Ice Cream Man to an extent. A little bit. Not not like super similar, but... Yo, Dynamite, my friend, my friend also... Uh, <laughs> I, t- I texted my friend. I said, yo, man, I finally got a comic book you might enjoy. And he asked me, he said, can we smoke that paper? And I said, I mean, you can smoke anything you want to. I don't know if I would smoke that paper, though. Uh, but I said, you can you can try. Here's, here's a little bit more on the art. I just wanted to skip over one of the uh, spoiler pages for you guys. So what this kind of is about is we got our main character. Well, these are technically the two main characters right there. The dude with the red hair. You kind of see that he doesn't have the best of like the best of a life. He he can't pay his rent. I'm I'm pretty sure he doesn't really have a job. And at this point, he's kind of house hopping, uh, sleeping on different sofas. So one night he leaves. He's a little upset about just the way things left with his roommate because his roommate was giving him shit. He's like, you know, where's the rent? You're behind on rent again. And obviously this dude, since he has no money, he starts giving him attitude like, oh, man, you don't know what it's like to just be me and the problems I have. And, you know, I don't have any money. Shit happens type of thing. So he's out taking a stroll and that kind of homeless looking dude with the hood up, he sees him and it looks like he's murdering somebody. But he's actually kind of murdering this massive spider thing that just got done eating somebody or murdering somebody else. And that's kind of what the whole story is, is that this homeless dude is kind of this protector of the night. He goes around hunting these bugs that prey on the helpless and the homeless and just people kind of wandering the streets late at night. Uh, So that's basically the premise of the story in All Eight Eyes. That's what I was saying. I don't think it was anything super special. The artwork was nice, pretty intriguing as far as the premise goes. Uh, But I don't know. Here, I'll show you a a little page with the bugs on them. But that's all pretty much is the dude with the red hair. He just has, he doesn't believe the homeless guy he said, you know, I must've been still drunk. I must've still been on drugs. Uh, there's no way I witnessed what I witnessed. And then he kind of comes to his conclusion and the realization like, no, I guess it's true. There, there was that big spider. And then they kind of go out and just kill spiders together. That's okay. Um, not bad. Nothing super great. Would I read the second issue? If it's a light week, I'd pick it up, but that's about it. Uh, let's see. Terror Wars about whatever scares you. It was okay. Not that impressed, but I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, it's so I think, yeah, I think they called them terrors. I don't know if they were actually bugs. I think, I think based on the cover, it was bugs, but they take form to whatever is your biggest fear. My LCS didn't have this one, but I ordered it. Uh, it's, it's not, like I said, it's not horrible. It's 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 really not that bad of a read at all. I'm I'm just I feel like I'm extremely critical when I talk about these books. Because I mean you gotta think about it too. Sometimes I bring this up periodically, but these books are all what? Four dollars at the minimum. Some of these are five dollars, six dollars on the all the way up to ten. The Batman One Bad Day books are I think all seven ninety nine. Chroma was I think seven ninety nine or six ninety nine. So if you're spending all this money on I don't know, just a book that you can read through pretty quickly. I understand that they're taking their time to write it. They've got to do the art. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of patience. There's a lot of talent that goes into writing these books. But that doesn't mean as someone who's reading a lot of these books and you can evaluate from, you know, the superheroes, you know, based on Marvel and DC and then Image, I like superhero books that are like this. I like horror books like this. I like when books have this type of writing style. Um, so I feel, 
that I, you know, us as readers, we can be a little bit more critical on this because this is our hard earned money. And I mean, there's people, there's people in chat that say they pick up 20 to 25 books a week. Sometimes that's, that's damn near a hundred dollars a week on new comic book day. Some people are spending, there's guys at the shop who spit, who have big ass boxes full of books every single week for new comic book day. Do they read them all? Probably not. But when you're buying a book for five dollars and it's on cheap ass paper, the artwork sucks, and maybe the story's really lacking too. I mean, we we have the right to be able to say, like, you know, are you really putting in that much effort for this book? Is it supposed to be a cash grab? What are, what are you doing here with this stuff? So that's why I say it wasn't bad by any means. Pretty unique concept, but it's not the um, I don't know. There wasn't a whole lot to that first issue. Somebody who's kind of down in the dumps, you see that a lot in some books. And they're out killing bugs that are also killing homeless and poor people. So it is what it is. Let's see. The inking that book looked amazing. Oh, for all eight eyes. Yeah, if you guys are just tuning in, let me show you. And that's what I'm saying. I think the artwork, the artwork kind of reminded me not like like slightly like Ice Cream Man to an extent. Uh, but I think they did a really good job with all of that. Oh, unless you were talking about Terror War. Oh, wait, no. I'm one of the dudes with a box every week. See, and you know, if that's, and, that, and that's the thing, if that's your thing, then absolutely be all about it. But to continue on with what I said, then of all people, you have an absolute right to ha to voice your opinion. You know, I say for like, you know, say I spend a hundred dollars every single week on these new comic book day books. AWA puts out a book like this. Image puts out a book like this. Marvel, why are you lacking? Why? And this is just a pure example Marvel, why are you putting out books that's on cheaper paper? Why are you putting out books that are kind of unfinished stories? Or there's an issue where you kind of leave a lot of loose ends and it never gets wrapped up again. Or you abandon plot lines completely to move on to another arc or a brand new volume. Or, speaking of volumes, why do you cancel something and make just a fresh number one that picks up where the story left off? What, to get new readers in? That those are things that we absolutely should be able to voice without, you know, getting criticized by other people. Because I have people that always say it's like, man, you complain too much about these comics. No, maybe you aren't complaining enough, or maybe you do really truly love all these books. Um, and that's, you know, that's your thing too. Everybody's got an opinion. Let's see. Uh, horror books don't do it for me. Ice Cream Man, Red Room are the only exceptions. Oh, those are both solid ones. I wanted to like Silver Coin. Oh, man, Kazer. I love Silver Coin. I am so excited for that one to come back. I really am. Uh, well, we're going to... I feel bad because we're going to be moving on to a couple more horror books. All right. So now, this is my first ever Archie comic that I've ever read. I don't know if this really counts as an Archie comic because this is the Chilling Adventures Presents... It's Archie Horror. It's a one shot, uh, but it was written by Colin Bunn. And that's pretty much the main reason I picked this one up because I went into it. I didn't know because I know Archie is always a little bit more colorful. It's a little bit more lighthearted. So I thought is chilling adventures like Archie Horror. Is this more along the lines of just, I don't want to call it like a, a Halloween Archie, but you know what I mean? Just like not a scary or horror book. It's just a kind of Archie version of that. But this was absolutely a horror book. Uh, Colin Bunn, that's what gave it away to me. He kills on all the horror stuff. And I thought I thought this was fantastic. Now, I will say I wasn't a huge fan of the ending. I didn't think... Um, uh, so, how do I want to put this without too many spoilers? I loved the entire book. I really did. I thought all of it, especially for a one-shot, one shot was extremely well done. And here's the artwork, too. And I think the artwork was equally great. They did a great job uh, building the story, talking about the character, and kind of seeing what happened with the character. So what it is, obviously, from the front, we've got our main character, uh, something Wilkin. I don't remember what his first name is. Bing, uh, Bingo. So his name is Bingo Wilkin. And he sells his soul to be a musician. And when, I mean, you hear that, I say that out loud, like, you're thinking, AR, that's not unique at all. That happens in a shitload of books. And you're right, it does. But it's how they progress the story. It's what they did with the story that I thought they nailed it on this. When they showed him with his band before he got popular, what happened when he did get popular. And now that his time is up and it's time for his, you know, his seven years or whatever it was before the demon or devil comes back to claim his soul, they showed that aspect of it too. I thought it was all really good. 
Now, when I say I wasn't a fan of the ending, I thought the ending was fine, but I thought what led to that moment, uh, that's why I said it's going to be kind of hard without too many spoilers in this. So I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get too in depth with it, but the actual ending itself, I thought was good, but how he became that character, I didn't think that that was, I didn't think that that was that good. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Izzy, what's up, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. Let's see. John, you have to check out the other Archie Horror books. They are all really good and done very well. Damn, that's awesome. I had no idea. I really, honest to God, thought, especially because my shop doesn't get, uh, I mean, I don't think my shop really gets any Archie to begin with, but I, um, I always thought that they were kind of just more along the lines of just, um, Whatever Archie is, I know it's a, a lighthearted story. It's not some evil or dark adult book, but I, pardon me, I, I thought it was going to be more along the lines of what the regular Archie is. So it was really cool to see that it's not. And that makes me definitely want to go back for the other ones. Let's see. The story and art are more important than the paper. I made by Archie for the writing. The art wasn't very Archie for me. No, I totally agree, Ko. Um, the paper itself, if it's low quality, if it's like lower quality paper, that's not that's not going to just com be a complete drawback. I mean, I'm going to complain about it for sure. Especially the one I was thinking of most was uh, the one from Cody Ziegler Marvel. It was uh, Spider Punk. That was that was literally on like some toilet paper, some tissue paper ass. Uh, but you're right. It is the artwork. It's the actual quality of the story itself. Uh, Nightwalkers, I heard, was really good. Try Afterlife of Archie. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, if you guys got some Archie, like some horror Archie stuff, let me drop that shit in the chat. I'll definitely uh, go back on it. Hey, Dad, what's going on, man? What's, tuning, what's up, man? Tuning in. That's awesome. I appreciate you popping in. Archie has a mature line, 14 and up of comics. Ah, oh, see, I didn't know any of that. I just always assume, especially because I do all the Archie books uh, weekly, I, I always cover Archie, and it's always just Archie Comics Digest, Archie Showcased. But every once in a while, an Archie Horror Presents pops up, and it's like, oh, you know, that's not bad. Um, maybe I'll see what they have it. And they almost, my shop almost never has it. But this one, I'm really glad they did. Let's see. A Town Called Terror was dope horror book too. Ah, Kaiser, I started A Town Called Terror. I my problem with A Town Called Terror was that I think the artwork. Uh, see, this is this is just me. I feel like this is just me complaining. the The way the characters interacted with each other and the way that the story was written, I don't think it matched the artwork at all. The artwork was very dark. It was gritty. If it's the same book that I'm thinking of, and it was just so, um. I don't know, like it had like this really just horror, scary vibe to it. But the the con the dialogue between the characters felt more, it felt more lighthearted. They were cracking a lot of jokes and they were just, I think he was complaining about his dad. Maybe his sister got involved. They're like, oh, you know, they just do this. And I just don't think it matched the art style. It's kind of like when I was talking about the nasty from Vault Comics, I think it was a week or two ago. Awesome concept of a story. That one's by John Lees. But the artwork really didn't match the type of story, and it kind of threw the vibe up to me. Now, I agree, though, Kazer. I definitely should uh, finish it up. I think I only read two uh, two issues. I kept, I kept wanting to say episode for some reason. Uh, do you do these live shows on particular days? I'd love to tune in more often. Uh, Dr. Nesneb, I do Thursday... I do all of these. I do the new comic book day reviews. That is now going to be happening on Thursdays, 5 o'clock for now. Uh, in time, it might be a little bit later, but as of now, all of my stuff's going to be at 5 o'clock just to make it really easy for everybody. Tuesday, I also go live talking about all the upcoming new releases. I have been going live Friday, but I do think I'm for my schedule, I think I am going to be changing that to Monday, plus if any crazy stuff happens over the weekend, we can talk about it on Monday. Uh, yes, 5 uh, p.m. EST. Yes, EST. Sorry, I uh, forgot to mention that. But yeah, so stay tuned. I do the news, like not news, but we do some top 10 lists. We talk about what's going on in the community, some other comic book stuff. And uh, every once in a while, if a good video pops up, I put the video on for you guys too. Uh, but I think I'm going to be doing that on Mondays going forward. So just stay tuned for that. Let's see. The next one, we're going to be doing either... Actually, I think I only have image left. Oh, wait, no. I got Boom Studios, too. All right, we're going to do the one from AWA up next. Black Tape, issue number three, cover A. This one's written by Dan Panazian, and the art is Dalibor Talajic. 
At least I think that's how you say his name. I think this is a really good story. I'm really enjoying it. I will admit this one wasn't my favorite of the series so far. Um, it felt like there's a lot that they just kind of left out in the open and that they didn't really do anything with. I'd show you the artwork and some of the pictures in this one, but there is a lot of pictures uh, that I can't really put on screen for this one. Uh, there's there's actually a lot of nudity in this issue. So I'm trying to find something. So like, this is what the artwork looks like. I had to, like I said, I'm sorry, I had to pan to see if there's good pages for you guys. So that's the artwork for this one. AWA has been releasing clunkers lately. Ah, I I hate I hate when people say that. But I will say I don't think I don't think this issue is that great, and I'm not hearing a lot of people talk positive, including myself on Red Zone. And there was one other one that I liked, but someone else said, "Oh yeah, that's the one. That's the one. The fairy book Trojan. I didn't I didn't really like uh, Trojan so far either. So I, I so for that I can agree. Trojan's not that good. Red Zone's not my style." But as far as spy espionage books go, I don't think it's still that great. And then I've been talking to some people who weren't a huge fan of this one. Uh, Kazer, I did like Hit Me. I thought Hit Me was good. That was only a four-issue one. So you got to take some of those four-issue miniseries, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I think for what they do with those four issues, I think Absolution was also four issues. I think they do... I think they did a great job in Hit Me really developing the characters. It's basically... They spent an issue, the first issue was setting everything up. Everything that was supposed to go down went down, and then we got a little backstory on the main characters. The second issue, they slightly expanded on the story just a little bit more by introducing that one main character, but then they went into a backstory on the other characters. So now we have a backstory on the characters, and we still progress the story as well. The third issue set everything up for the finale, and I honestly thought they did a good job wrapping everything up. So Hit Me, to me, it was a really good one. Fight Girls, highly underrated. My only problem with Fight Girls is that they should have kept going with it. I thought they had a really good thing going where every issue was a new event. And I think they should have spent every issue with an event and then whatever the post-event stuff was. So if they have one event per issue, while they also expand on the story just a little bit, but they also leave a mystery as to who that main character is. Is she actually that girl? Who is it? Who is it supposed to be? I think they had something really good going on their hands, but it almost felt a little rushed in my opinion at the end. Recount is also... A, Recount is very good. I'm a huge fan of Recount. I did not read the second volume, though. Uh, I do want to continue on with black tape just a little bit. The, yeah, like I said, I can't really, sh I can't show any of these pictures. It's either, it's either all spoilers or it's just, it's, it's like spoiler and nudity. Uh, so I'm, so I'll just, I guess, show you the cover again. Yeah. Sorry guys. It's either nudity or spoilers for this issue, but we're basically at the point. So as I was talking about with how they did hit me where the third issue they kind of just went all in on not wrapping up the story, but setting up the final issue. That's what happened in this one. I think they did a fantastic job over the course of the first two issues, giving us an awesome backstory on the characters and kind of diving deeper into who her, I call her ex-husband, but the deceased husband. But there's still a mystery to that too. It's She's digging a little bit deeper, learning that he was actually involved in a lot more crazy shit than she was led to believe. But then it slowly turned into who can she actually trust? Can she trust these people? Can she trust them? She's learning that everyone kind of has this, I don't know, this kind of ulterior motive. And this issue is when you actually learn all about that. You see that kind of, that's it. I was going to say, this This is the spoiler issue. This is where they expand on everything, and it's probably going to be wrapped up really well in the fourth issue. Let's see. Oh, seeing all the good stuff by AWA. Not All Robots was great. Erratic was fantastic. Uh, I don't... Yes, Kayser, somebody else said that. They said a Mark Russell book is a, a skip in their opinion. I was like, Not All Robots was really good, but I will say I think Mark Russell did New Think, and New Think was terrible. Bad Mother is fantastic. Black Tape has spiders too. Does Black Tape? Chariot was awesome, and I'm waiting for another volume of Chariot. I don't know if Black Tape had spiders in it. I think, I think, I don't know. I don't think it does. I could be wrong though. Ideal City, what's up, buddy? Uh, Henny, anyone grab Order and Outrage too? Just got back from the shop with that and Magic Order. I, 
I didn't grab Order and Outrage 2. I didn't like that first issue, man. Uh, maybe I'll continue on with it uh, when it's all said and done. It's wrapped up. But the, the artwork was great. But the story itself, uh, I didn't really like it. All right. So I've got two from Boom Studios now. And then I've got three. Oh, wait. No. I forgot. Let's talk about DC first because DC Black Tape, page eight and nine. Let me double check. Oh yeah, there were. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you're right. There are spiders. In, there are spiders in this one too. Yeah, there's there's spiders in every horror book now. Uh, I don't know if, if everyone is just that scared of spiders or what the deal is. Uh, so I did read Superman issue number three from DC, the brand new ongoing that they're doing. So here's my take, and this is coming from somebody who I've talked about it. I haven't read any Superman books before. This is my this is my first solo Superman series that I have read. I really like it. I think it's great. I think the artwork is fantastic, and I really enjoyed this third issue as well. So what I'm hearing about it, though, as far as the complaints go, I think somebody said this last night, and somebody may have said this on Tuesday, too. They said it's a terrible series for longtime Superman readers, or maybe not terrible series, but it's a, I think he said frustrating. They said it's a really frustrating series for longtime Superman fans. And as a new reader going into it, I can totally see that from that perspective. And my take for the first issue was this was a great spot for new readers. I said they introduced Lois Lane, they introduced uh, Superman, they showed the farm, they showed Jimmy Olsen, and they kind of all had these little, like, it seemed like a sitcom introduction. Like, when they popped onto the screen, there'd be, a, like, a, a clapping from the audience behind, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, it's just me, Jimmy Olsen, Lois Lane. Something like that. That's kind of how it seemed. But the artwork was so cool. And in the first issue, they really kind of jumped right into the story. A little bit of action, but they showed us where it was going to be going. And the second one jumped straight into it. One of the huge complaints from a lot of people, and I totally understand where this one's coming from. They said, why was Superman so willing to just not befriend Lex Luthor, but trust him and kind of follow through and listen to him with stuff? And I thought, well, for me, I just assumed that I missed out on something from a different series. I thought maybe they reconciled some of their differences, maybe something happened, kind of like the Spider-Man and Norman Osborn that's going on in ASM right now. Something along those lines. Maybe he turned a new leaf and he's just, they're kind of chummy now, who knows. That's not the case. Apparently that didn't happen and it's just... I don't know. He's just listening to him. That's what I was told at least. So I can see from that perspective why uh, some people are complaining about the series. But like I keep saying, someone like me who's new to it, I think it's great for new readers. And I think they do a really good job just having a new reader friendly story. So if you're a longtime Superman fan or reader, let me know kind of my take compared to your take on it because I would love to hear your opinions on it too. Uh, but this issue, it was a lot of fun. I don't think that everything going on with Parasite was wrapped up that well. But I guess based on how it ended, it kind of seemed like this was just a little couple introductory issues that's really going to jumpstart the story. I'm not going to spoil it because as I was saying, it wrapped everything up in this one. And if you know what's going on from the second issue, it's just finishing up what happened in the third one. I don't think we really got any new stuff going on. The other character that they introduced in the second issue is definitely going to be coming back. There's a lot of stuff going on with that other cast of characters that's been working behind the scenes. So that's probably where we're going to be moving forward. Mark McGrath, that was me who said that. I was going to say, I, I didn't want to put the wrong words. I know it was somebody in chat. I didn't want to say the wrong words. But I was pretty positive somebody said, I think you said it was frustrating. As a, as a Superman fan. I didn't, I didn't want to say terrible or something like that. I'm pretty positive it was frustrating. And I totally understand it. Let's see. Mr. Negative. I don't think the Lex stuff is as big of a deal as those people are acting. I don't see where Superman is really trusting Lex Luthor either. I So based on this third issue, I get that now. It doesn't really seem like he's going along with Lex Luthor's plans. But... For the first issue, maybe the second issue, I can kind of see where those those guys were coming from uh, because he kind of was leaning towards them like, oh, I don't really want to listen to you because you're Lex Luthor and all, I guess, everything that we've um, dealt with in the past together. There's no reason for me to ever trust you. But it kind of seemed like he was leaning that way. 
But I'm excited to see how that plays out too. Smallville is the best Superman story. Uh, Pasmo, I don't, I don't know if there's a comic for Smallville, but if you're talking about the TV show, I don't know if my dad's still watching, but that dude is obsessed with Smallville. Obsessed. I remember growing up and he would always have that on. I'm pretty sure he, he still watches it to this day. He's got it. He's got all the seasons on DVD. Superman. Superman and Lois Lane. I, I was going to say, I don't know if that, that's a current series. Kristen Correct was the reason. S Smallville season 11 is comics. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, but that's, that's my take on that series. I think it's really good so far. And if anyone in the chat has been interested in checking out Superman or something new from DC, I think it's been a fun read. But the artwork, if I like I said, I'm reading it digitally, so I can't put it up for you guys. But the artwork has been a, a really big one. I think it's been great. Uh, there he is. Dad, speaking from a Marvel viewpoint, I have read the new 52 and Superman Rebirth. That was the best DC reading I've ever, that I've read. All right. That's coming for a guy who doesn't read DC. So... Superman and Lois is the current CW show for Superman. Oh, gotcha. I, it sounded familiar, and that's, I guess that's where um, I guess that's where I recognized it from. Superman by Williamson is certainly better than when Bendis was writing it. Uh, the reason Clark trusts Luther now is because the story says he does. Spoilers, now Lex has a... Oh, I said the spoilers out loud. <laughs> uh, I won't do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, was, uh, that is something I, I wasn't going to... I mean, if you put it in chat, it is what it is, but... Um, I was trying to avoid some things. All right, but let's move on to uh, Boom Studios. We got Boom Studios, and then we got Image. The first one I'm going to do is House of Slaughter, issue number 14. This is cover A. This is a dope cover. This is my favorite cover of the House of Slaughter series so far. This is incredible. I, It's, it's a fantastic cover. I'm going to show you guys that again. This is probably the cover of the week, in my opinion. I think... Uh, between the cardstock cover on it, the actual artwork, the colors on it, I love it. I love every bit of it. It's fantastic. So now about so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a couple pages real quick. Gotta make sure they're good. It kind of reminded me of now I don't know this is I don't know why it reminded me of this. So these are the first couple of pages for anyone for anyone that did read. Uh, this issue, did it, did it give you blade the, the first movie blade? Did it give you vibes like that when they, when they go to the club and, and I mean, this didn't happen in the book, but you know, when it starts raining down blood on everybody, the music's on and everybody's dancing. And then you see everybody turn to towards the one person that's not a vampire. I, I, for whatever reason, really got that vibe from, um, uh, this issue. So if. You saw Blade and you still have to read this, that, or I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you think about that. But, um, it's kind of, it's kind of getting into spoilers then, but I like this issue because we finally get our main character, Jace, and he's sitting down with Jolly. Oh uh, yeah. Jolly cutters and something's killing children. Hey, Kays are happy 420, man. Uh, so where was I going with that? So we've got Jace and we've got Jolly. They're having a sit down at one of these bars and Jace, is, Jace basically just showed up and said, hey, check it out. I'm alive. I'm well, Jolly. I hope you remember me. I hope you've got no hard feelings for what happened in the past. I don't think that they really elaborated on what happened between them in the past besides something going on. Uh, you learn that in this issue. Um, like I said, I don't remember if they talked about it. Uh, that in depth beforehand, but they definitely show it in this one. So you see what happens between them and why Jolly isn't really a fan of Jace. But he's reaching out. He's saying, you know, I'm I'm reaching out to you. Please let me get Sonny back. That is my kid. I just please let me get him back. And you see them have this talk and it turns very south very quickly. And a lot of stuff happens from there. It was it was an awesome issue. I really enjoyed it. And the cool thing was, is that while Jace and Jolly are having their conversation about Sonny and what kind of was going on with them in the past, you saw what ha what was going on with Sonny uh, kind of in the present time. They were just showing little glimpses of it. And at the very end of the issue is when you actually saw the outcome of what was going on with Sonny. Overall, top-notch issue. I am so happy that House of Slaughter 
is just a readable series now. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you what, that first volume, it was terrible. I did not enjoy it at all. I didn't think they did a good job with it. Everything going on with Jason Aaron, I, I didn't care for this love story. I'm reading Something is Killing the Children because it's a monster book. It's, I mean, think of the name, Something is Killing the Children. That's what I'm reading here. House of Slaughter. I was interested in learning more about the House of Slaughter, but it was just this love story between them both, and I just, I didn't really care about it. When it moved into Edwin, that's when I was happy I was still reading it, but I'm telling you, I was really debating on dropping it. And then when I saw that this new volume, the new arc was picking back up with Jace, I thought, man, we're really going back to this crap again, but I think they redeemed himself. And I don't know if it's because Tynion is writing it now, but I don't think Tynion was writing it before. I don't think he was writing volume one or the stuff with Edwin. So maybe that has something to do with it, but he's, they're doing a phenomenal job on this newest one. Let me get caught up on some of these comments. Let's see. Oh, Dad, everyone says you got good taste. You have, you, know, you have to watch Smallville at least once a year. Uh, he does. He does. Uh, that, he's not bullshitting with that. He does. Uh, there's a series on YouTube called Talkville where Michael Rosenbaum and Tom Welling rewatch the show and talk about it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm sure he would like that. Let's see. Dawn of DC is spot on so far. Green Arrow next week. I'm probably going to give Green Arrow a shot too. Yarrell, happy 420, my friend. Smallville is good, but it is a Clark show, not a Superman show. The mantra for the show was no fights, no ties. Superman wears a costume and flies. Smallville is a story of how Clark becomes Superman. Yeah, I feel like that's why a lot of people liked it already, or likes that show. Uh, Dynamite, to my knowledge, I'm pretty positive Dawn of DC. I'm not calling it like the DC Rebirth or the New 52, but I feel like that is this version of that. Like they're kind of starting fresh with a bunch of characters. A cash grab. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, Parasite was cool. I thought Tape Rumble wrote that issue. Ah, uh, this one? Uh, it could be Tape Rumble. I, I, they have James Tynion. Uh, they got his name first. But I think it does also have Bromble on... Uh, let me double check. Where they put it at the end. Let's see. Uh, series... Oh, series development by James Tynion IV. Written by Tape Rumble. You are correct. I am wrong. Uh, illustrated by Antonio Fuso and colored by Mikel Moreto and lettered by And World Design. Designs and development by Werther Deladera. All right, you are correct. Development was by uh, James Tynion, but written by Tape Rumble. People, <laughs> people read Marvel. Uh, yeah, I do, kind of. All right. Now we're going to move on to the other one from Boom Studios. I'll tell you what, Boom Studios had some home runs this week. We got Harrower, issue number three. This is cover A. Uh, this is written by, let me double check, Justin Jordan and Brom Revel. Well, written and artwork done by them. I am, I am very surprised with how much I like this issue. I just got done. I just got done telling you guys on Tuesday. I said, you know, if you're a fan of the 80s horror stuff, you like Halloween, you like Friday the 13th, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, stuff like that. You're going to like this because there's not really a story at all. They're just focused on this harrower and how he's just out demolishing people and just killing everybody. Uh, they're not focusing on character development. They're not focused on plot development. They're not really doing anything besides trying to survive from the harrower. And we, we already knew where this issue was probably going to be going because the first issue... They show the harrower and then he, he, you know, he murders a couple people in town and everyone keeps talking about how, oh, you know, it's that time of the year again. The harrower is going to come out. Everybody's got to be careful and people think it's also just a myth, shit like that. Second issue was crazy. They went, they went all in on the harrower just being this monster. It was awesome. But at the same time, we kind of knew where the third one was going because whoever survived, they obviously were going to think of some sort of plan of action. How are we going to proceed? How are we going to live? How are we going to take down this monster? However, they went in a different direction, kind of, and they actually developed a plot in this issue. They have a real plot going on, and it was kind of a complete, like, my, kind of like a mind-bending uh, plot twist to this one. I, I got to the end of this issue, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm... 
I feel actually invested in the series now. I will say I'm still not a fan of the artwork. I don't think the artwork is that nice. There is a ton of action in this issue. Uh, to be honest, the only drawback from this series is probably the artwork so far. I'm just, I'm just not really a fan of it at all. I'm not a fan of the character expressions. I'm not a fan of a lot of the character dialogues. Uh, but what I will say is this one around the halfway, maybe the three fourths point, it really took a different direction. And uh, I'm, if you guys have kind of been on the, um, kind of on the fence of picking this one up and especially after you heard me talking about it like oh, i'll just wait it out i'll wait to see what happens and we'll go from there i'll i'll tell you what i'm really excited to see what happens with the story now they went kind of a different direction and it's extremely interesting so props to them for that yeah coin collector definitely a friday the 13th style i think i had a little bit of like a, a michael myers halloween vibe reading this third issue but for the most part it's definitely more of a friday the 13th yeah ko i agree good writing art is muddy i the the artwork it, i just don't think it's that it's it's not that nice to me not my style cautiously looking forward to green arrow williamson has been letting me down lately superman is just okay shadow and shadow war and dark crisis were a mess well williamson's writing something else though that i think i'm reading that i'm really enjoying oh brother b you're crazy man silver coin is one of my favorite horror series from image i absolutely love silver coin uh the only issue i didn't like which is crazy because he's one of my favorite uh, writers, was the Jeff Lemire issue. I thought that was one of the only ones that didn't really fit with the silver coin. I just just wasn't that good to me. Uh, Louis, or Luis, let's see. Hey, Art, have you noticed a downtrend in sales from your local LCS? Are sales down for them? So I don't... I don't know their numbers off the top of my head. I do work there. I, I don't know. I don't ask about numbers. I don't, you know, above my pay grade. I don't... I don't I don't ask about that stuff. Uh, but either way, what I will say is that from me moving here last year, so I've gone to the shop whenever I lived in Pennsylvania, this is the shop I would go to. Every time I would come home to visit, this is where I would go. The new comic book day walls were always stocked. They were always packed. Never even had to have a pull list because I knew they were just going to have it. All those small indie publishers, all the publishers you've probably never even heard of, they had it. They would get everything. The walls would look fantastic. I moved here last year, uh, last December. Well, shit. 22, I moved here. Yeah, 20 or 21. I don't know. Twenty. The end of 21 is when I moved here. And the walls were looking a little barren. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, maybe because it's the holidays, seasons, whatever. And as the year went on, they're ordering less and less stuff. I'll tell you what. From the time of me moving here to now... They have cut back tremendously on New Comic Book Day. And it, I can't, like I said, I can't speak on their numbers, but they absolutely are not selling nearly as many New Comic Book Day books. Uh, people just, they're not interested in it in that same way. And they went from having usually a couple long boxes worth of books to put on the shelves. This week, we had, I think it was a quarter of a long box to put on the shelf. And that, I mean, obviously people ordered books. Those books were already pulled. These were books that were just shelf ready for whoever comes in to get books. And I'll tell you what, a lot of them are still sitting on the shelves. But that's not to take away from them as, a, as an LCS. Because they sell everything. They have everything. They've got game systems. They do all the trading card games. They've got board games. Uh, they've got walls of key books. They've got hardcovers and trades. Back issues back issues throughout the entire store. I think they've got almost 30 or 40 long boxes of just dollar books. They've also got priced back issues of keys. They've got a lot. They're a phenomenal shop. So that's not to take away from like, oh yeah, they're not doing well for new comic book day. I think in general, new comic book day just isn't what it was. You look back a couple of years, people were lining up at the shop to get maybe a spec book or a first appearance book. And people were loving that stuff. People were hyped about a brand new series with the potential of where it could go. Think about, for example, with Donny Cates' Venom, when he did Absolute Carnage, when he did King in Black. Even between those two, there was a big difference. When Absolute Carnage dropped, people were going batshit crazy over that. People loved it. People were eating up the tie-ins. They were just excited for Absolute Carnage and how it worked its way into Donny Cates' Venom. A year later, or whenever... Um, Whenever, what, what did I just say, King and Black popped up, 
it wasn't the same as all same at all. It had a different vibe. People weren't excited about it. People weren't hyped up for it. They weren't saying, oh, this is it. This is that. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's to me, new comic book. They just isn't what it was. And it doesn't help that as far as Marvel goes now, the, the indies are killing it. The indies are killing it. Marvel's just not as good. Their books just, they're, they're falling flat in my opinion. And now I, I saw dynamite say location is huge. And, uh, comic chefs, oh, what's up comic chef. I don't know if I said hi to you before. Uh, is your area just oversaturated? If I, now this isn't to take away from the other shops, because I know Jaff is in the area. It's JAF. Jaff is a great shop. Jaff has a lot of keys as well. They've got they they have a lot of new comic book day books. If we're being honest here, I would go there for new comic book day if it wasn't so far. Um, they they get it all and they get bad idea comics if anyone's from the area and cares. But outside of that, that's like kind of thirty ish minutes away from where my shop is. But outside of that. I don't think there's any other comic book shops in the area. If you go like 20 minutes in a different direction, there might be, but there's really nothing there. And I will say that the shop is very good. It is. I, this is what I was going to say. I don't know if it's just me kind of hyping them up because I, I work there and not only do I work there, but I do buy a lot of stuff from there. I think they probably are the best comic book shop in the area based on the amount of things that they do have. Cause as much as, you know, as good of a shop Jaff is, they don't sell the things that my shop, The Encounter. Oh, I should probably tell them who, like, say who they are. There, it's The Encounter. It's in Allentown, Pennsylvania. If any of you guys ever stop in, uh, seriously, it's a great shop. They've got, like I said, statues, back issues. Um, they they sell everything. That's why I could say I, I can confidently say that they probably are the best shop in the area. They're always getting collections in. They're always buying collections, and they run a good store. They run a very good store, and they hold they host game nights as well for the cards. Um, I like going there. So that was, uh, that little, that little rant. So to, to sum up the entire story, I think it just is new comic book day in general. Now I would love to talk to some other shops to see what they have to say. Um, I'm not tight with other shops like that. I know out in Oklahoma, I was tight with a few shops and that's also Oklahoma where new comic book day in general might not be, um, as good as say, I see KO saying Midtown, which is in New York, there's obviously going to be a massive difference. So the shops out there, man, coin collector, you didn't have to do that at all, man. I, I appreciate that, bro. Uh, that means a lot to me. I appreciate the donation. That means, that means a lot. Um, so that's, that's why I was saying, I lost my train of thought, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, that <laughs> really, that really threw me off, bro. Coin collector that thank you so much, buddy. Um, so what I was saying with that is like the shops out in Oklahoma, you know, out there, things might not be, I spits cough. I would bro. Uh, I ran, I ran out, I ran out of, uh, Michael secret juice or whatever it's called. Michael secret stuff. I ran out of it. But out there, New Comic Book Day, the shops didn't really get a lot for New Comic Book Day to begin with. Like, they got all of the Marvel, they got all of the DC, but the indies, they usually didn't get the indies. Image, you know, the big titles from Image, I'll say right now, like, say Spawn, if Vanish was going on, a series like Vanish, something big, something popular. But for example, uh, like Terror War, I'm going to talk about Terror War next and Last Barbarians right after that. They might only get one or two copies for that because they're not going to take a risk on uh, buying maybe 10 copies and it just sits there. So DC and Marvel, you could re you could rely on for everything. But Indies, they were it, it was a rough one out there for Indies. I will say that. But there's a lot of there are good. There's really good shops out there, too, like DZ Comics. Uh, if you're in that area, I think it's Moore or Norman. In Oklahoma, they have uh, all gaming, back issues, walls, keys. They got an arcade set up there now. A very good comic shop. All right, let's see. Dynamite, Marvel, and DC are the names the general public knows. Facts. Unfortunately, interest in the indies is directly affected by the two big, uh, by the big two bringing new fans in. I can agree with that too. Buy some comics to review AR. Absolutely, Henny. I, I always say that anytime uh, donations or any every time any like. Uh, from ad revenue, everything just goes right back to the channel. It, it's for books, it's for giveaways, it's for stuff that I try to do for you guys uh, to make better quality, all, all shit like that. 
Uh, but the next one I'm going to talk about, I'm going to save Terror War after that. We're going to do The Last Barbarians next. This is cover C. This one's written and done by uh, Haberlin, Brian Haberlin. I, I, I'm not... I've kind of been I've kind of been hyping this one up. Not not saying like it's been like super good, but I really liked Hellcop and it's done by the same person and I think that this one had a lot of good going for it. I'm not saying it was phenomenal, but the story was interesting. There was a mystery and I kept saying I'm 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 excited to see where they go with it. I want to know what's going on. Uh but I think after this third issue, I don't think I'm going to be continuing on with this series. I keep saying the artwork to me, the artwork looks too, I don't know, it looks too digital. It doesn't, it looks too kind of cartoonish and bubbly. And the artwork's not really my style. It's not bad, just not for me. But we even, so this is just a, this is a quick little thing. Uh, I'm glad I opened to this page. Let's see if you guys can see it on the screen. Uh, there we go. Can you guys see that? It says, I guess you have... I guess you have many questions. And then under uh, Sylve, it says understatement. That's how I feel reading this. I have so many questions about this series. And when they, they said that, I actually laughed out loud. And I was like, that's true. That's an understatement of how many questions I have about this series. What happened to Sylve and her brother, which we actually did learn a little bit more about in this issue. But who's this kid? Who's Falk? Who's these, who's these like twin brothers, which I said, we did learn a little bit more in this one. Who are they? And who are these other two women that are also trying to get this kid? And what's going on with this kid? Because we learned he has powers. I, there's just so much stuff happening in it and we don't have a lot of answers. And for three issues, it's three issues deep already. I kind of am at the point where I guess I don't care. Um, I felt like when I was reading through this book, I was just reading through it because I bought it. It wasn't because I was interested to see what happens to Sylv, because I want to know more about this kid, which I mean I did, but after the first few pages, I was like, it's this again. I, It's been the same thing after three issues. And even Falk, uh, one, Falk, Falk, however the hell you say it, one of the main characters, he even he even makes the comment because Siv starts going on a rant that Siv's the main that's Siv. Uh, she even starts going like, you know, I'm going to be done with this this journey until you start giving me more answers. And she starts and he starts going on with, ah, in due time, I can give you more answers. But for now, I cannot. Well, for now, I don't know if I can continue on with this series because I'd like something happen to happen or at least something, you know, to get my interest going. The kid has powers. Kids have powers in all these freaking series that I've been reading all week. I mean, we can go down the line. I'm sure there's probably at least two or three other ones with kids that have powers in this one. I mean, we got Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur. Uh, well, I guess it probably is that one. Well, I proved myself wrong on that one. It's only Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur with a kid that has powers in it for this week. But still, it's, it's kind of boring. The artwork just really isn't doing it for me. So I might continue on with the series once it gets a little bit deeper if i hear some other people talking about it or uh, talking very highly saying like oh you know everything that they were building up it was worth it maybe i'll get back onto the series but for now i i'm pretty sure that's going to be my last one of the week uh let's see i don't order i don't advance order you can't buy a comic by its cover i agree with that uh title i was talking about the last barbarians uh from uh image yeah, all superheroes with powers were kids once. Oh, yeah, Comic Chef. So, Erratic, Firepower, Secret 7, Radiant Black. That's that's what it is. You're right, there's a lot of Barbarian. There's another, there's a new Ablaze Barbarian title that came out this week, too. But that's what I mean. And this is the stuff that I was just talking about earlier, too, is when we have a book like this that kind of has um, a premise that we see often. And I know we don't see this type of a premise uh, like The Last Barbarian super often, but the idea of a mysterious kid and then all of a sudden you learn that this kid has powers and that he's important for whatever reason. That concept alone really isn't that unique or that special. We see that all the time, whether it's a superhero book, some other indie title. It's not something new. So for that, you have to really, to me, this is my opinion, you really have to make the rest of the story special enough for me to say, okay, while that portion of the story is interesting and intriguing, I'd like to know a little bit more. I'm more. In I'm also interested in what's going on with these other characters. But because in this series, the focus is basically completely on this kid, 
and everything is still up in the air and we don't know anything about it yet. The focus is on something that is very overdone and I just, it's overplayed. I, I don't know. There's nothing special and unique about it. That's not saying it's not going to get better though. Uh, next up, we've got Terror War issue number one. This was a new one from Image. I was really excited for this one. Hold on, let me check out some of these real quick. The Golden Child, Eddie Murphy's Eddie movie. Uh, tell me what you think about the new idea. Uh, what do you think the new idea that should be out in comics? It's all same with just different background or areas. So I agree with that. And that's a little that's a little tough. And that's why I always say I feel like I'm very critical. But in reality, I, um, I'm not creative. I'm not. I'm not creative. I don't have good ideas with this type of stuff. I mean, shit, I can't even draw to save my life. So... I always feel bad saying like for the last barbarians, like I don't think the story is unique. I don't think the artwork is that good for me. I couldn't do any better. I can't. Um, so I always like to pay respect to the artist and the writer. And I always try to say, it's just not for me. <laughs> Henny, the new, the new April fools, DC covers. I, I did do those. No, I'm kidding. I didn't do them, but uh, I probably could do something similar to that. Um, but the thing is, uh, so the Chosen One is a classic trope, and you're right. It has to be done in a new and interesting way to entertain readers who have seen it before. I think that's what it is. It's So to go back to Comic Chef, it's not that we need some new fancy idea. Because look at me. I like horror books. I like the monster stuff. I like detective, mystery series. Those things are up my alley, and I, I that's what I prefer to pick up. But at the same time... You're you're in a category that's very that's very oversaturated. Like Mark McGrath just said, the chosen one, this kid, uh, he he's got these powers. We need to save him. We need to get him from point A to point B. If that is going to be the main plot of the story, there has to be some other things going on with these characters. There has to be something else going on in this world where the focus isn't completely on just that because that alone isn't going to make readers want to continue because they could just read something else. But with this one, if they would have elaborated a little bit more on Sylv. Now, like I said, we did get her backstory in this one a little bit more, uh, which obviously led to what happened to her brother, why he's kind of like the Hordor character from Game of Thrones. But I think if by this issue, say Falk would have told her everything and was like, you know, I'm actually this person. I'm part of this group. We need this kid for this reason. And then say they didn't just tie up those other two girls and knock them out again. I, guess, I think that's what happened in the other issue. If they would have been like, no, we're part of this group and we need this kid for this reasons. They are going to take that kid and they're going to do whatever with them. But we're going to do this instead. That to me is what all of a sudden makes the story interesting. I think that's the type of thing that could continue to make the reader want to be in that series. But instead, they keep it ominous. They say, ah, I can't tell you yet. Oh, we'll find out eventually. We uh, Or we just don't have the answer for you. Well, if you don't have the answer, then what is really the, the reason that I, the reader, should continue on with this series? Do you want me to just tag along with you on this journey for another five or six issues and then you kind of start sprinkling in information about these other characters? Like, I, I get that you don't want to rush things in the very beginning with a lot of these stories, but at the same time, you need to make the reader feel invested. You need to give them something, whether it's a backstory on the characters, uh, a development in the characters, or just overall a super interesting plot, and then you expand on that as the time goes. But when you're three issues into the series, and I don't know how long the series is going for, and you still don't know basically anything about anything... You start to feel like you're wasting your time, and that's kind of where I'm at. And that's why I said in the beginning, I like this issue. I like where this series could potentially go. It feels like it has a lot going for it. The artwork, a little bit of a drawback, but hey, it is what it is because there's a lot of interesting characters that were in a lot of different places that all wanted this kid. But when you don't know anything about anything and now you're moving into the fourth issue and you might learn something in the fourth issue, all I'm saying is the readers tend to start to lose interest in all that stuff. Uh, but back to Terror War. Oh, sorry about that. So back to Terror A good twist would be if the kid turned out to be an evil lord. Yeah, maybe. Maybe the kid is this evil lord and they want him. Uh, they need to take him somewhere. They need to cage him up while the other one is part of some cult or something. And they're trying to make him into their lord or their savior or something. I don't know. Stuff like that makes things interesting. But if you keep the reader in the dark, you're you're going to lose somebody. You're going to start to lose the audience at some point. Terror War, I thought, was a very interesting first issue. I really liked the artwork. Uh, 
I don't think the artwork was as good as some of the other issues that I read this week. I don't know what I can compare it to. Um, but it here, I'll show, I'll show you this page. I saw someone reference this page earlier. So what it is, you've got our, and it's written by Salad and Ahmed, and I really like Salad and Ahmed. So even if the first issue is just okay, I'm willing to continue on with it because I think he's a great writer. I love what he did with Miles Morales. Um, so we learn about the actual terror war organization. It's kind of like a, a group of these, you know, a group of, uh, you know, I don't want to call them soldiers, but I guess you can, they're comparable to a soldier. They're out to stop these terrors. I don't think they actually told us what the terrors are. Some sort of, I don't think, I was going to, I wanted to say bug at first. I don't think it's a bug. I think it's just some sort of monster. And I'll bring it up again. And what they do is they take form of your biggest fear. And as you can tell, that guy, um, you can't let the terrors touch you. That's a big no-no in this world. So, yeah, it says this guy. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not going to read anything for you guys. Uh, you guys should read this one yourself because I, th I did think it was a good issue. But what it basically is, they introduce the terrors, what the terrors are, and why they're kind of this, uh, you know, this bad thing in the world. I, don't, I think they said they don't even know where they came from. They just kind of popped up one day. But then you've got... The thing that makes it interesting to me is that this main group, it's not just them. There's other kind of mercenary groups like this. I think mercenary is a better way to describe it because after kind of, well, yeah, like Dynamite said, uh, Kermit the Frog over there got annihilated by our man on the front cover here. They talk about a bounty and the rest of his group says, hey, did you activate the bounty before you kind of went about uh, killing that terror? And he was like, no, I just wanted to save people. And they were all like, well, we're not going to get paid now. So that's a problem. And then when they start fighting a different terror later in the issue, they bring up the bounty again. So I guess they're kind of more like mercenaries, uh, but they call themselves like the heroes. I think they said, uh, what did they call themselves? Uh, the, the jewel in the darkness, it kind of remind, it kind of reminded me of the fireflies. What was it like? Look for the light. Uh, the fireflies will lead the way or something like that, but they called themselves the jewel in the darkness, these little mercenary groups. And I don't know, it was a fun first issue. I don't think we really got a ton of info on everything, but it was just enough for us. It was just enough for me to want to continue on. Uh, this one I'm not going to be continue. On um, this one I'm not going to talk about too much. Uh, if you picked it up, you picked it up. If you didn't, you did it. We got a, a Doctor Atomic, the Pipe and Dope book. Uh, <laughs> I really didn't know what I was getting into with this one. I'm kind of surprised Image released a book like this. Uh, it's it's really an entire book about weed. It's in black and white, so if black and white's not your thing, there's that. But this is like the type of book it is. Uh, so uh, very 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 dialogue heavy, but it's. It's talking about all the ins and outs of everything that has to do with marijuana. They're talking about pipes. They're talking about joints, different types, how to grow, how to how to just build something to store the weed in, what to store it in. Uh, that's that's what this book is. Uh, so everybody that's been commenting 420, I'm sure you all picked this one up. It was fun. It was fun to. Uh, it was fun to page through. And I mean, I didn't read. I'm gonna be real with you. I didn't read the entire thing just yet. Uh, this is the only issue this week that I didn't read the entire thing for, uh, but this is that's basically what this entire thing was. Yeah, how to care for a plant? What's weed? It's the it's the thing that grows in between the cracks in my freaking uh, cement outside my house. That that's what they're talking about taking care of. I think if it's uh, I think it's a drink. It 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 is a drink. Uh, the last book that I'm going to be reviewing is I had to read this one digitally too. We got No One, issue number two. This one's from Image. This is another really good issue. I saw someone earlier saying that they didn't really, I think they said they didn't really like the second issue. See, this is the type of thing that I was just talking about before. I really like it for what it is. Sure, there's not a lot of action. I think we only saw a little bit of action in this issue. Hey, Breezy Comics and Collectibles, what's up, buddy? I think we saw a little bit of action in this issue, but man, the... Just the the world building that they're doing in this story. Now, I know this is just a me thing. I did lose track of some of the characters. Uh, there's a lot of characters that are going on. We got the podcast people. We've got the dad who's also the kind of retired chief, not retired chief. We have the actual 
Uh, I believe it's a police chief. The senator that's in it, his son, the murdered son, uh, the murdered wife. Uh, th- there's a there's a lot of people in this series. So I do think personally I mixed some of them up or I lost track of who was who at one point. But man, the world building that they're doing, there's a lot of stuff going on in this series and they're really not telling us a whole lot of info just yet. This is what I was talking about with The Last Barbarians. Now, if they told us a little bit of stuff that makes the reader want to continue on, that's a whole different ballgame. You can keep it... um, You can keep it mysterious. You can keep it ominous. You can do these things, but you need to give the reader something that says, oh man, I can't wait to find out what happens with that or what's this character up to? What's going on behind the scenes? And that's exactly what this issue was. I agree, Dynamite. It was very dialogue heavy, but I think that's where this series is going to be. Um, I'd... I don't really know the best way to compare it to something, but it really is just like a mystery of who is no one and his son. Does he know who no one is? Does anyone know who no one is? And is it an imposter? Is it the legit actual one that they thought uh, either got arrested or killed all those years ago? Uh, Let's see. David Rodriguez says the podcast really enhances the experience. I totally recommend listening to it. I've heard the same thing, but I will say I have not listened to it just yet. I would like to listen to it. I'm probably going to listen to it. Uh, well, maybe tonight. Well, who's, who knows? Uh, but either way, that's where I'm going to leave that. There's not a lot of stuff I can talk about with it. Cause I can't be like, Oh, no one went crazy in this issue. He was going wild. It was just, you see all the different characters and they're trying to put the pieces together. The, uh, the dad, he's trying to ask his son who's in prison. He said, do you know who's behind this? Do you know? Because you knew this was going to happen. And then they brought the editorial staff into it. There's just A lot of characters and a lot of stuff going on in it. And I do recommend reading it, especially if you like the other stuff in the massive verse. But yes, Dynamite, I agree. Found it, found it dialogue heavy, but I thought it was good dialogue. Hey, Joseph L. What's up, buddy? Look, missed the first one and a half. Looking for the next one and a half. Uh, Well, you came at a good time. Oh, wait, think I might need to read the first issue. Oh yeah, that, uh, oh Yeah. You're going to need to read that first issue, bud. <laughs> if you didn't read that first issue, you're definitely going to be confused as to what's going on. Uh, it's not going to be one of those series where you can just kind of pick it up. All right. So, it is time for The Tear Maker. So, these are all the books that I'm going to be talking about. Like I said, we got Dr. Atomic. We got Terror War, Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, Black Tape. House of Slaughter, Dead Seas, that one is Superman, Harrower, that, The Cult of That Wilkin Boy, Eight Eyes, The Warlock Series, Last Barbarians, and No One. That's a hell of a lineup. And before I start going on this list, Spitzkopf, I'll throw ASM on there in a brand new category of just F. It's going to be the Marvel category. I'll put ASM in there. I already know that's where it belongs. Um... This is a hell of a week. Before I start ranking these books, I, I just want to tell you guys I really enjoyed these books this week. I thought I'm just looking at the list again. I mean, the only one that I just I just didn't really think was that good was The Last Barbarians. And to be honest, it's still not horrible. I'm just losing a lot of interest in it. But the rest of these, Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur, surprisingly a lot better than I was thinking it was going to be. Uh and all the books that I had kind of like questions on like oh is warlock going to be good what's up with the the dr atomic book stuff like that they were still solid uh did did ar do a live demonstration from dr atomic in the first hour no that's uh that's gonna be that's gonna be a private live stream no i'm kidding i'm not doing that uh not on a stream asm is mystery box nonsense oh that's the best way to describe it no i'm not reading asm man uh, I have quit on that series. I have been disappointed one too many times. Now, I see everybody asking about uh, the Spider-Verse stuff, the ASM coming up. You know what? No, I'm not. I'll, we're going to save we're going to save that for uh, Tuesday's live stream. I I'm telling you, it is ridiculous looking at the amount of carnage and Spider-Verse shit coming out, it is a joke. Marvel, we talked about it in these streams, I always said, they're killing it, they're beating it down to the ground, it is It is so far down the ground, they're still trying to beat whatever's left out of just carnage and symbiotes right now. And 
I'm telling you, if you want to get yourselves a quick heads up for a good laugh, and we uh, always say like they need to just take a break from it completely. They just need to reevaluate what they're doing with it, and give the readers just you know a breath of just fresh air away from just Spider-Man and Carnage for a hot minute. No. They double down, they triple down, quadruple down. They're going batshit crazy. Not this week, next week on uh, those books. It's wild. It is wild. Uh, I'm excited to see where you put Terror War, bro. Super interesting first issue. So, all right, so we're going to be going down. We'll go down the list. We'll do, we'll just go straight down. I'm going to, so this one, uh, I have a hard time with this one. The Doctor Atomic, the Pipe and the Dope book. It's not really a comic book. They do have some dialogue in there. It really is kind of a guide on what to do with marijuana. That is really what it is. I didn't finish reading it. I got maybe halfway, quarter, uh, three fourths of the way, and I just said, you know, this is this is what it is. I bought it just to see what it was. Um, but it's it's you know. I don't really know where to put this because it's not its not like a comic book. I, I feel bad putting it in like a D because there's books that deserve to be there. Uh, not really this week though, but I'll just, you know, I'll put, I'm going to put it at a B. And, I'll, I, and the reason I'm putting it at a B is because, I mean, they actually, they actually t- it's a good guy. <laughs> they tell you what to do for everything. Uh, they tell you all the ins and outs. If you've had any questions about any of that stuff, yeah, Joseph L. I flipped through it and it seemed literally like blueprints. Uh, that's that's what it is. So as far as the blueprints go, I mean, I haven't tested it out yet, so I can't tell you if uh, how great it is. But I'm I'm just gonna leave it at a nice middle ground. It's not bad. It's not good. It's basically a guidebook to uh, a guidebook to all to all that stuff right there. So take that for what it is. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the B though. Let's see. Summer of the Symbiotes. KO, I agree. Absolutely agree. A, a big yawn fest. <laughs> Drugs are bad, okay. <laughs> they should make a Moon Knight type of variant where Venom, Carnage, and Spidey occupy different personalities in one spider form. I wouldn't be surprised with the the 35 different spider-man series that we kind of see that already uh not to that extent but uh let's so we're just gonna go down the line we're gonna do we're gonna do marvel first we're kind of gonna do it how i did the actual reviews we'll do marvel and then we'll do like the single indies and we'll wrap it up with uh image so moon girl devil dinosaur uh as i said it was surprisingly better than i thought it was going to be it's not directed towards me at all i said if you've got kids i think it's worthwhile uh to to pick it up for your kids. Uh, but I'm going to put it at a C. The artwork was nice. The story, it was a good story. It actually had decent plot and uh, character development, but it's it's it wasn't for me. It's definitely meant towards it's definitely meant towards a young audience. Uh, the other Marvel book. So we got Warlock. Oh, I got to show you the cover again if you guys are just tuning in. I got the Alex Ross Timeless with Thanos on it. I love it. I I think it's a great cover. As far as the issue goes, so as I said, I thought it started off a little a little wonky, wasn't sold on in the beginning, but as it moved into the introduction of Eve and everything that happened between Adam Warlock and Eve, I thought that was cool, and I think it's got a really interesting premise moving forward. Uh, so no doubt, I think it's a solid B. I don't think there was anything... I don't think there was anything super special. What the hell? I don't think there was anything super special about this first issue that warranted to get it an A, but by no means was it bad. Uh, I think it was a solid first issue. Not a great one. Not a bad one. A nice introduction to get new readers into those characters. Let us know where the story is going to be going. And they left us on a cliffhanger. That's a solid B story to me. Dr. Cosmos Labs got ahead to work. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate you popping in, man. Have a good day. Have a good day at work. Uh, and I think that's the only two for Marvel. And then, so we'll move that, that one out of the way. What do we got next? Let me get that Marvel book. Where the hell is it? There she is. Let's see. We'll move into, we'll do AWA. So we got Black Tape. 
Uh, Black Tape was another one that I thought this was probably my least favorite one of the Steve. I don't think I don't know if I said it earlier, guys, but I I think this issue number three was probably my least favorite one of the series so far. Uh, I was a hundred percent on the slower side compared to where everything else was going on in the series. And usually, how I compare issue number threes for AWA out of a four issue miniseries is they usually follow the same plot or the same type of uh, format. I mean, I guess if you're really thinking about it, AWA follows the same format in the guideline for every single mini series that they do. And I think the four issue mini ones, they've always nailed it. They've always done a good job. We get character introductions. Sometimes we get a backstory, but at the same time, we get a problem at hand, plot progression, great introduction. The second one really expands on everything, background stories, all that good stuff. Now, the third issues, they usually really just kind of throw everything out in the open. They set up that fourth and final issue, and that's exactly what happened with this one. But instead, I feel like the lead up to everything that we learned, everything that went down was very slow. It was the same thing for the entire issue. We had our main character. It was the, uh, the deceased husband's wife. And it's just kind of showing her. She's still talking about, oh, I didn't know what my ex-husband did. I don't know who, if I, who I can trust. What are we doing right now? What are we doing moving forward? And they're kind of doing a recap to what happened in the last issue. So I think where it ended was fine. And I'm excited to see how they wrap it all up. But overall, I do think it was definitely on the slower side. And it didn't have, it didn't give me that usual like, yes, I'm so pumped for that fourth and final issue. So for that, I think it deserves a B as well, but it's definitely not as good as the Warlock book, in my opinion. How do you guys feel about that one? To be honest, I don't. I know we were talking about AWA earlier. I don't think I saw anyone really talking about Black Tape. Uh, we were talking about Hit Me and all the other good ones, but I don't really know too many people that are reading Black Tape. And then moving on, we'll do... Uh, let's see. That's all. All right. We're going to do the cult of that Wilkin boy. All right. So next up we got Archie. This is the Archie horror that, like I said, this was the first Archie comic I have ever read. Um, I didn't know what I was getting into. I knew it was technically a horror book. I knew it was written by Colin Bunn. I was really excited for it. Uh, the only complaint I had about it, because like I said, I thought it was a great story. I thought they did a great job for everything. I thought the build up, the background, it was all really good for a one shot. I, I like the ending. I didn't like that tiny couple pages that led to him becoming that character at the end. That was my only complaint. But overall, I think it was an A book. I really think it deserves an A. It was good. It had uh, really good artwork. It had everything good going for it. Uh, I'm going to be real with you. I think if... No, it, it's still a solid A. It probably would have just been an A plus in my opinion if uh, they kind of did something a little different for that one part. But overall, I still think that they did a really good job with this one. Haven't read it yet, but I've been I've been swamped. But I will tonight, dude. Let me uh, let me know what you thought about it. Like I said, it's uh it was a good it, it was a good issue. It was much better than I was anticipating. Uh, moving on, we got Dead Seas. Yeah, dude, John, it's all, it, I'm telling you, it was. Uh, I, I'm glad you liked it too. I, heard, I saw you talking about it earlier. Uh, Dynamite got to go. Great live stream. Oh man, I appreciate it. Ah uh, man, nah, it's it's the conversations that we all have together. This is a uh, this is a community thing. I love talking these comics, but I love uh, hearing all your opinions as well. I appreciate it. Uh, have a good rest of your night, buddy. Next up, uh, I think I can't remember which one I just said, but I'm gonna do all eight eyes from Dark Horse next. I. Uh, I don't know. I I don't th I think it was a decent first issue. I think there really wasn't anything special about it though. I thought the artwork was all right. I'll show you this page with the big spider. I I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to continue on with this issue. I I even as far as the main characters go, I just don't think that there was a ton of stuff uh that really happened in this that I don't know that made it that special to me. So I think for those reasons, I'm actually going to be putting this one in at the C. I just, I started reading it. I thought, all right, this is going to be, you know, decent. And the whole premise of there's monsters, they feed on the homeless and the poor people that wander the streets at night. And we kind of have these uh, vigilantes who go out at night to hunt these spiders. It's just, I don't know. It just was okay. There wasn't anything special about it. The characters themselves... Just all right. Everything about it was just all right. 
So I think definitely a C. I think the only other one left as far as a single publisher goes, we got Dead Seas number five from IDW. Based on nobody commenting about it, I guess nobody else picked up Dead Seas this week. Uh, but like I said, we didn't talk about it in the Tuesday live stream. I didn't see a pop up on my list. And when you look it up, it says it's still coming out next new comic book day. So I don't know if there's a mistake sending it out or what happened. But I'm really happy they did. I thought this was an awesome issue and arguably, despite me not remembering who some of the characters were because there's just an oversaturation an oversaturation of characters in this. Like, they don't have to have so many characters that are talking. Uh, you've got the inmates, but you've got, like, so many different inmates that were talking. You've got the crew on the ship, and they're all kind of having their own role. The kind of owner's daughter showed up, and then there's a few other people that, like the pirates that were trying to take over the ship. And then you've got the ghosts who actually play a role in this one too. So there's a lot of characters, but with all that being said, I really like the artwork, and this was probably my favorite issue of the series so far. They expanded on a lot, and they finally kind of unraveled what's going on with the dead and why they're stuck on Earth. This was a great issue in my opinion. Now the question comes down to it, because it's getting an A, was it better than Archie? And I don't think it was. I think Archie was that good. Uh, but still to me, it deserves an A. Definitely think it deserves an A. All right, so Coin Collector got Dead Sea. I hope you're enjoying it too. All right, Mark McGrath said, the money versus enjoyment equation is one that every individual has to decide for themselves. This hobby ain't cheap. This hobby is absolutely not cheap. And I, we were talking about prices earlier. And I always say, this is why I'm super critical on these books. If I'm spending 40 to $50 every single week on these books, I want to enjoy it. I don't want to just be a yes man that says, yeah, yeah, I'm grabbing that new series. Of course I'm grabbing that new series. Oh, ASM? Yeah, I'm not really enjoying it, but I got to complete it. Or I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I got to get all the new series. No, I'm not going to waste my money on something that people are pushing out as a cash grab. I, I want to read something I enjoy, and if I stop enjoying it or I'm losing interest, I'm going to drop the series. I might continue on with it for a little bit longer to see if it gets back to it, but I'm not going to I'm just not going to waste my money on some garbage. Uh, I think this was all right, we'll go to Boom Studios next. Ooh. Ooh, all right. This these are going to be a little tough. These are these are a little tough. My girl likes to remind me of my hobby, ain't she? <laughs> they always do. They always do, my friend. Uh let's see. Uh, on these hardcovers, limited deluxe edition sounds like a perfect hobby for kids. That's what I'm saying. Uh, they always say like when people make those jokes and they say, uh, comic, their comics are supposed to be for kids. Where the hell you think a kid's going to get $125 for an omnibus? Oh, a $75 deluxe edition, a hundred dollar absolute from DC. Oh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know where kids are getting that type of money. My friend. Uh, what's the title of the second A? Oh, that one's Dead Seas number five. Uh, this is actually, I forgot to tell you, this is cover, uh, this is cover C. This is the only cover they had. Uh, that's cover A. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, truth and faith. Uh, absolutely, man. Nobody wants to feel like they wasted their money or worse yet got swindled. I'm telling you, when I first started, so when I first got back into comics, and there was a couple comic book YouTubers that I watched that did reviews, I'll tell I'll tell you straight up. I stopped watching them after after a while because I feel like every time I'd put them on, it'd be like they'd be reviewing it and it'd be like, "Oh yeah, this book was awesome. This book was fantastic. I loved it. This book was great." And it's like, "You're not really there's no way that you think every single one of these books is great." And it was week after week and month after month. And I was thinking, because it, it would come down to me reading a lot of these books, because I started getting back in the comics. I started getting more into indies, started reading more Marvel stuff. And I was like, no, we didn't read that same book because that was stupid. And I thought this was stupid for this reason. And then when I see some other people talking about it, like, yeah, this is terrible. But then you see the pattern of they, they don't like to be negative uh, because nobody, nobody likes ne negativity. Nobody likes to be that negative person. But I'd like to be as real as I possibly can with you guys because like Mark just said, it's a very expensive hobby. And if you know, if I don't like something, I'm going to tell you straight up why I don't like it. Um, I don't want somebody to tell me 
that the new Donny Cates Venom series is the greatest thing in existence because it's written by Donny Cates and Donny Cates is the greatest writer that's ever lived. I mean, everybody's got an opinion, but you're going to tell me every single thing that that man comes out with is the greatest thing ever. And then you're going to tell me that ASM is also that good. No, nah, it's, it's just not, it's just not the case. People want to hype up certain things. And, uh, I just, I, I just go with the flow, you know, James tiny, as much as I like him, if he doesn't have a good book, like blue book, I'll tell you straight up, not a fan of this one either. Uh, but moving on house of slaughter. Number 14. I loved it. I, I thought this was a great issue. This is arguably my favorite issue of the series so far. What I was saying earlier reminded me of the, the intro to the first Blade movie. Jace is showing up to this uh, club bar, meeting Jolly. They're having this conversation. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of crazy shit went down towards the end of this issue. You saw behind the scenes what was going on with Sonny in the meantime. This was an awesome issue. I... I went from almost dropping this series to kind of enjoying it to looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the series now. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you I highly recommend it because I don't think this man, coin collector. You really, man. You really don't have to do that stuff, man. You really don't have to do that at all. Uh, I I thank you, but seriously, you don't have to do that. Um, I I feel as though that. Uh, lost my train of thought again. Uh, Joseph L. agreed. One of the greatest scenes in movie history. And I'll see if it's really a spoiler. But here's what I was talking about. Especially like these right here. Yeah, Coin Collector, you're the GOAT. I, I really do appreciate you, buddy. Uh, and this is it. He shows up to this club. And, you know, it's all dark. There's colors going on. And you see... You see him just like kind of standing there. Not knowing what he's doing. And then you see this off in the distance... And I think that's when things really started to click like, oh, wow, this really uh, this really is reminding me of Blade. I mean, it's not vampires or anything, but it gave me that vibe. But then when you saw everything go down and you saw the other side of it with Sonny, man, I'm telling you guys, I felt this was an S tier book. I loved this issue. I was really happy. I read it. I was really happy when I was done reading it. And I'm really looking forward to the next one. So that's why I say, uh, you know, I don't. I'm not going to tell you I highly recommend this series because I, I do think the first kind of entire volume with Jace, I thought it was horrible. The stuff with Edwin was a little bit better, but looking at what House of Slaughter is right now compared to even with Edwin, I don't think the Edwin stuff was that great. But sadly, if you want to pick this up, you probably need to at least read the first stuff with Jace. Um, not super necessary, but it's going to give you an idea of why he why he's there right now. Uh, but it's, it's worth it. It's, uh, it's a really good, it's a really good series right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm starting to wonder that myself, my friend, uh, but coin collector, you are, you are the absolute goat. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, it means a lot to me and I will definitely be getting, uh, some more, like, seriously, let me know, let me know what you, that's the thing, you, you coin collector, you let me know what you want me to read, let me know what you think, um, that I should expand my horizons on and check out, whether it's an omnibus, uh, hardcovers, trade paperbacks, uh, your favorite character, your favorite storyline, whatever you think is just, you know, something that's close to you, let me know, and I'll definitely read it, holy shit, you spend four to six hundred every Tuesday, I got to process that. That's <laughs> spit. Oh, what's, what's the scene from a uh, wolf or wall street. You show me a paste up right now. I'll quit my job. I come work for you. All right. <laughs> oh man. All right. Who's your, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite though? Coin collector. Seriously. Oh, uh, who's your, what's your favorite publisher? Marvel, DC, indie, Favorite type of story? Favorite? Uh, I'm going to keep going, but I want to know like what your favorite is. This one. This one. That's another one. It's another crazy one right now. Harrower. Number three. This is cover A. I, I was taken back by how much I enjoyed this issue. I had zero expectations. And that kind of uh, plot twist fucking thing that they they did in this one, it really, it really threw a curveball. And I really liked it. It turned, it turned into... 
This book was this book was a series that I picked up just wanting for a slasher type. That's it. Just wanted a slasher. I want to see what the harrower's capable of. I don't I want to see these kids pay the price for whatever the hell they did. Uh, and you saw it in the second issue. I wanted to see it in the third one. They turned it into a story and they turned it into a really interesting story because they basically elaborated and showed exactly what was going on that they kind of were hinting at in that first issue. Uh, as I said, I was really taken back by this issue and I'm, I'm putting it up in the S I'm putting it as an S I, uh, the only drawback is the artwork. That's the only thing I will say is I, the artwork is a downer for this series, but I absolutely loved what the story. mm. No, you know what? I take that back. I take it back. It gets an A. I changed my mind. It's an A. Uh, and uh, the reason I changed my mind is because they didn't really develop that until kind of the end of the issue where they left us on that cliffhanger. And there's a few moments of dialogue between a few characters that I really wasn't a fan of. Uh, I didn't think it really made too much sense. And this character annoys the absolute shit out of me. This freaking, this freaking turd right here. He annoys the hell out of me. I don't know if he's designed to do it, but he does. Uh, so I think for that, I'm going to leave it as an A. But seriously, it's a it's an, a fantastic issue. It really is. All right, next up, we're going to do The Last Barbarian. The Last Barbarians, issue number three. This is cover C. This is cover C. Uh, I'm going to be real with you. This is probably the only issue of the week that I really wasn't a fan of. I... It's it's just it really wasn't that good. Um, the artwork is okay to me. The story, while they did elaborate it on just a little bit more, uh, the main the main plot of it is just an overplayed plot. Uh, this kid, he's got powers, and these different groups of people need him. I'm I don't think I'm going to be continuing on with the series. I'm I don't think it's I don't think it's worthy of a D, but it's definitely going at the low end of a C. Oh shit! I forgot about Superman. Uh, we'll do. Well, we'll do. Well, we're we're continuing on with this. Wow, ninety five percent. What don't you get? At the, at that rate. Same here. Yeah, that's crazy. Ninety five percent of the new releases every week. That's a lot. That's a lot of books. I'm trying to rationalize that. I can't imagine what your collection. Yeah, that's what he goes. He says, I uh, I get 95% of the new releases every Tuesday. Oh, what don't you get? ASM. Shit's garbage. <laughs> uh, so next up, we're going to do Terror War. This is a brand new series. I thought it was a lot of fun. I think they did a good job with it. I don't get the ones my, L- uh, ones my LCS doesn't get. That makes sense. Uh, so... Terror War. It was a fun first issue. We got some introductions. Saddam Amin's a great writer. I like the artwork. Uh, artwork, not the greatest artwork, but still still good. It actually kind of reminded me a little bit like... Uh, I think that's the way I want to describe it. Kind of like The Exiled. The one from Whatnot right now. I don't think it's the same artist, but it kind of reminds me of The Exiled artwork. Not nearly as dark, but kind of the lining and uh, the way the characters are designed. A little bit like that. I like the concept of the terrors. I like the concept of them kind of just being like these vigilante mercenary groups that are killing these terrorists for a bounty. Uh, I like that. I'm excited to see where they go with it. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think they really did a, a ton with the first issue. It's just kind of a nice introduction. But I'm going to put it at a high B. Um, I don't think it was worthy of an A based on the other books that I have in an A. But it's definitely a very good read that I recommend checking out. When you buy the X titles, oh man, 95% of it is X titles at this point. (laughs) I got a storage problem. I can only imagine. I mean, if you get every single book every week, that's got to be pushing a short box, maybe even more than a short box. Uh, Next one I'm going to be going over is No One. This is the, I, I read this one digitally. The last two I read digitally, Superman issue number three, No One issue number two. Um... I really liked it. I think no one is a great series. I think if you're a fan of the massive verse, it's definitely all my, hold on. 
I'm going to check some of these comments. This is a, this is a good conversation. Uh, Coin's a beast. Coin is a beast. Serious time commitment to read all those books. Half talk to you. Yeah, hopefully you do read them because I know some people that buy a lot of books weekly and they don't actually read them. All my old comics got stolen from storage rental. I would absolutely be sad about that too. With cash like that, do you collect original art? Oh man, Dom, that's a good question. Original art, that's where you start to really spend some money though. I'm super casual, just a few issues a week. That's why I try to do like 10 to 15-ish. Uh, especially now that I do the stream like this, it's a lot easier to get around 15 titles. Uh, but back to no one number two. Uh, somebody said earlier, I, I, for, was, I forget who said it was earlier, um, that they it was dialogue heavy. Absolutely true. I think they're doing a great job with the story, though. Uh, they're keeping everything up in the air. You don't exactly know who you can trust at this point. There's a lot of stuff happening with a lot of different characters. We still don't know who no one is. We don't know if the sun is involved with anything. Oh, shit. We don't even know if it's the original no one. It's copycats. Uh, it's a great mystery series. And I'm always a little bit biased towards mystery and horror stuff. And for a series like this, where they have a mystery, I think they've done a really good job expanding on the story, keeping me very interested, telling us enough info for me to want another issue. And if it helps at all, this is a series that I hype up to everybody. I tell, I've tell, i been telling everyone, hey, you got to check out no one. If you're reading the other stuff from the Massiverse, this is probably the best one so far that I've read. Um... But it, it, the way that they're writing it, I don't need action. I feel so invested in this story that they're telling. And I think that's the reason why I'm going to be putting it up in an S. And that's another reason why I brought Harrower back down to an A. Because I knew no one was going to be an S tier. And Harrower's not on the same level with House of Slaughter and no one to me. But it absolutely was still a great read. Uh, Mr. Negative, I have not read... The po or I have not watched or listened to the podcast yet, but I plan on doing it. I heard it really makes the the story better. Damn, John, fifty five long boxes. Hey, Todd's from Pittsburgh. I remember. You, I think you brought that up last time too. Uh, that maybe that plays a little bit too into it too. The whole Pennsylvania thing. Rice Spitzkoff, people who break into even like LCSs to steal comic books and shit. It's it's just so sad. It's a joke. All right, this is it, everybody. The last book of the week. We got Superman, issue number three from DC. Where's it going to go? So I liked it a lot. I thought the artwork is great. I think the artwork is probably the... I, I feel like the artwork is one of the best aspects to this series so far. I love what they've done with it. I think the art is great. I do think everything with Parasite was kind of... Uh, blown over very quickly. And I think they kind of wrapped up everything they built up. Because I think... I, they, the way that they were talking about Parasite was that it was about to be on a global, just a world-ending scale. Like, they, like Parasite, if he kept multiplying like that, there was going to be a massive problem that they probably couldn't stop. So the fact that they were able to just kind of fix it very quickly and easily, that kind of took away from it. But I liked everything else that they did with it. I like how they kind of wrapped that up, but they still kept some other open-ended things going on. And they continued on into the next plot for the new arc. Um... So I will say, as someone who's not really knowledgeable on Superman, I think it's a great new place for readers. Uh, issue one, of course. But I'm having a lot of fun reading this series so far. But I'm going to put this one... I'm putting it at a high B. This is more like a B plus that could sneak into like an A minus. But I think uh, this is... I think this is the best way to put um, this list. No doubt in my mind, House of Slaughter, No One, they were S-tier books. I loved everything that they did with both those series. I got zero complaints. It was a lot of fun. It left me wanting more. And I was really excited and engaged while I was reading the issue. Now for the A-tier, we got Harrower, The Call to That Wilkin Boy, the Archie one-shot uh, horror issue. And then we also got Dead Seas. All phenomenal issues. Harrower, way, way better. Unexpected. Took a crazy turn. Actually developed a plot. It was a ton of fun. The Wilkin Boy one, also equally very good. Uh, caught me by surprise. Didn't even know what I was getting into. It's my first ever Archie comic. And based on this one, I absolutely will be continuing on with the one-shot horror ones. Dead Seas, probably my favorite issue of the series so far. They did a great job with it. They really um, expanded on the ghost. They expanded on everything. And there's only one issue left, so I'm excited to see how they wrap it up. The Bees, they were all good. I think uh, there's nothing about them that really set them apart from the A tier. They're just 
an all right issue. There's nothing that really makes a lot of these special. Unique concepts, good stories, great artwork, great introductions. Because I'm looking at like Warlock, Terror War. I think it's called Terror War. Yeah, Terror War. Two really good issue number ones. Um, but, the, you know, it's a good introduction. That's about it. I'd like to see where the story goes. Black Tape. Put it out of B. Probably my least favorite issue of the series so far. But they did a good job setting up the ending. Superman. Pretty much the same thing. Love the artwork. Mark says the same thing. I thought the Parasite stuff was wrapped up too quickly. Also, it was great to see the Parasite, though. Fantastic villain. See, he's new to me. Uh, I Like I said, I don't really know DC too well. I haven't read a lot of DC in my life. Um, but that, that was kind of my drawback on that issue. Now, if that was kind of continued on in this issue, and maybe they wrapped it up at the end, or they wrapped it up in the next one, but we got to see more of uh, stuff going on with that, or maybe they come up with a plan in this issue, then maybe it would have snuck into the A-, minus, but... Because it got kind of wrapped up after they said how bad of a um, everything was with Parasite. Eh, whatever. But still a good issue, still a good series. Uh, the Dr. Atomic, whatever the hell it's called. The the marijuana book. It's I just put it at a B because it's not... I guess it's more of like a guidebook. I mean, there's dialogue in it and it's kind of characters talking back and forth here and there. But it's not really a comic like that. Uh, so it, it felt unfair to just categorize it as a D, um, when in reality it's just kind of right there. It is what it is. Ah, uh, see, I like Livewire too, but I, that's cool. It's cool. It's not just me thinking that that Parasite was wrapped up quickly. The artwork alone is phenomenal. Like I said, if they wouldn't have done that with uh, with Parasite, it probably would have snuck into the A because I do love that series and the artwork. To be honest, Superman, out of all these books, probably does have the best artwork out of everything this week. It's probably the uh, the best art book for the week. But then C-tier, Eight Eyes, super okay. Nothing really special about it. Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, it actually was good. I, It actually is a good read if you have kids. It's not, I'm not the audience, I'm not the intended audience for it, but... I'll just say it this way. I didn't hate what I read. I think as far as a kid's book goes, it's probably one of the best kid's books that I've read. And in Last Barbarians, it was a stinker. It's probably the only book this week I didn't like, but it's not fair to put it in the D slot because the artwork, while it's not for me, it's not horrible by any means. And the story, they did elaborate it on a little bit more. So at least us as readers, we did get a little bit of something out of it instead of an entire another issue of just, all right, we're just going to continue on this path of wherever for whatever because we don't know anything about this kid either we don't know anything about Falk the other characters so not as much as up in the air but everybody that's a wrap on this week's new comic book day I told you guys it was a hell of a week I had some really good books I hope you guys all enjoyed your books too thank you all so much for hanging out tonight uh, uh, it means a lot to me all of you guys tuning in keeping chat lively if there are donations, like I said, you don't have to don't you don't have to do that at all. But I appreciate those as well. I appreciate all of you. Love you all. Um, I love doing this stuff. I really do. Um, I've got my community Discord pinned right there. The comment. If you click on that, you can join. It's free. Let me know if you've got any questions for it. There's like thirty ish people in there now, so we're getting little people in there. It's a lot of fun. We're having some uh, conversations. Uh, but it's a good time. Ah. Uh, Joseph L., I, after I just got done saying you don't have to do that stuff, and you do it. I, I appreciate it, but thank you so much. I love hearing all about your opinions. You guys all rock. You really do. I, I love doing this stuff. Stay tuned. Like I said, I don't I don't know if I'm going to be doing the typical live stream tomorrow. I think I'm going to be saving that for Monday and seeing how it goes. So just stay tuned for Monday. And then we'll have a video Sunday, Monday. Well, Sunday video, live stream Monday and Tuesday, and then EXP on Wednesday, which reminds me. I, I'm a, I'm feature on the EXP. All their links are down below in the description. It's every single Wednesday, six o'clock EST to eight o'clock. Comics and collectibles. Uh, they they have a whole bunch of shit on there. Uh, slabs, signed books, sketch covers. They got it all. Uh, you got any questions? Let me know. And always got to throw it out there too. If you are interested in support, uh, my Patreon is listed down below too. But don't feel compelled for that. I just I love having these conversations with you guys. Um, but seriously, thank you all so much. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your new comic book day. Enjoy the sun if it's sunny and warm where you guys are. Uh, tell your family you love them. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe, guys.